I was always a creative kid. My dad gave me the freedom to pursue hey, a creative come? interest. And for a long time, I was considering Instead becoming like a cameraman. Sense. It already started like going against the grain and having to figure it out myself anyway, because mm -hmm. not even the programs were compatible with my computer that I decided to buy wow. against the school advice. And eventually I became sick of it. I, I really I, hated it and I started to skip school, skip hours, and eventually my parents like Ooh, found I out. I was about to turn 18 that summer and I need to follow my dreams. I only live once, I gotta do this right. I was like full in and I don't regret a single decision I ever made. Just like work my butt off in that little room, make my portfolio better. I think having a long-term vision is the most important and, and then having actionable steps. And if I get a yes, I'm like, hey, I'm onto something. This means yeah. that there is a company that values what I do so much. They're willing to pay me in thank you notes, which is money. Mr. Eden, how's it going, man? Thanks for joining me. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. I'm doing great. That's great, man. How's it going? Where are you? <laughs> who I am? <laughs> who are you? Who are I'm you? Aiden. Where are you? What are you doing? I am Aiden Garazio, and uh, I live in the Netherlands. That's a uh, beautiful country. And I love design. That's great, man. How's everything? Mm -hmm. Good? Yeah, man. So so busy with um, a couple of projects that I'm working on and mm -hmm. um, I'm very blessed during this time that I've been able to do this and yeah. um, I just you know focused on producing quality content and that's all that matters so. that's great yeah I always follow you on Instagram you do amazing stuff man like the other day I was I told you like um, I was I had a chat with Mike Nash we had a like we recorded an episode we also do live sometimes and he, mm -hmm. he brought up your website I was following you before that and then we were looking at your website and your portfolio and everything. It was just, I don't know if you watched that episode, but it's, it was a lot of I, fun, like I seeing what you do. But I, but I will. That's great. So, um, do you mind if I ask about your, what made you actually to become an artist? Like, um, I don't know how much you want to share your age, your history, your like life story, something that you think could motivate others or, you know, share some information. Um, sure. I was always a creative kid and um, my dad always gave me the gave me the freedom to pursue uh, creative interests. Mm -hmm. So instead of saying like, oh, no, you have to become a doctor. <laughs> he actually <laughs> he actually let me um, explore my creativity. Mm -hmm. He provided tools for me, um, canvases, enough paper and coloring pencils and paint, etc. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're a kid you don't realize these things but when you look back as an adult and you see like what he did for you and uh yeah. gave you the freedom to man manifest your passion that is so valuable i'm so thankful for him that's uh, great that he allowed me to do that and allow me to grow so that is basically what has been how it's been going i've been always drawing in the classroom and my books and it's like the typical story and it, it, it it's like so cliche but that's the truth you know yeah i, I always was creative since the beginning right since you were a kid yes i mean it's interesting because when i i remember like I, I said it a couple of times like i was the same like my parents were buying toys for me and i never touched them you know i was creating my own toys with uh, papers you know whatever i could use like you know dirt or anything you know just like playing with the stuff so i guess that's it's, amazing it's just part of our dna i guess right mm -hmm. i think so so um uh, did you have to deal with any type of obstacles like when you were um, growing um, to become an artist and to come into this industry work as a designer or like your parents were always supportive or did you have to like deal with like finding clients or finding ways to grow your skill set learn new stuff you know yeah definitely <clears throat> I mean nothing in life is really like super easy yeah um, and Growing up, I, I knew I wanted to be creative and eventually I found out that 
a thing called concept art uh, existed mm -hmm. and this was and i found out by watching behind the scenes on movies etc like lord of the rings and yeah. watching the behind the scenes of, of weta making like all the orc suits and the swords and all that stuff and mm -hmm. um these concept designers drawing up the worlds and alan lee etc and i i had so much admiration for these people and the craft that they were paid to do and i mm -hmm. found it absolutely amazing and i wanted to I wanted to do the same thing and eventually i um had to go through like high school and you know you know how high school goes you're doing yes. other things and ev eventually when i knew i was going to finish and graduate the focus shifted again to the subject of hey what am i going to become and for a long time i was like struggling and trying to figure out and look into my into myself to really ask the question hey what did you want to become mm -hmm. and for a long time i was considering becoming like a cameraman because i oh, love wow. filming and I, yeah, yeah yeah and i and i even went to a uh, open day uh, at a new university to um to look into becoming a cameraman and that's interesting and because i because i loved cinematography and uh, you know it's something i never actually told before i guess but wow you know, that is that is what i did and and something in me just said like no i want to do art and the shitty thing about the netherlands is you don't have like concept art academy or you don't have like uh you know the the concept art school in pasadena yeah. california you yeah. don't have those there so the closest study that came anywhere near concept art was like game design oh wow so i applied um for the study game design and i entered and i showed them my portfolio and i was like making drawings and binding them together to show them like oh my god i want to get you know accepted and i got accepted which was amazing and then you know they taught me how to make low poly mobile game models and all that stuff and mm -hmm. they taught me the fundamentals of photoshop and uh, 3ds max but because i bought a macbook i had to download maya so i was following all the classes in maya instead of previous max so it already started like going against the grain and having to figure it out myself anyway because mm -hmm. not even the programs were compatible with my computer that i decided to buy against school advice by the way wow um, and eventually i became sick of it and i I, I really hated it and I started to skip school, skip hours, and eventually my parents like found out and uh, I got in so much trouble. Oh. And then eventually I left school and I was I was about to turn 18 that summer. So oh, I wow. left. Oh wow, so you June. were 17 at the time. <laughs> yes. I <was> very <laughs> so I was 17, about to turn 18, and in that summer, right before summer started, I, I quit school on mm -hmm. a Tuesday and i never i left school i never came back and um then i knew what i had to do and i left also my parents place because they said hey man if you if you want to like stay here you got to go to school we want you to have a diploma and i mm -hmm. totally understand in hindsight but at the time i was like i need to follow my passion i need to follow my dreams i only live once i got to do this right and you know that and you're good at it like you can feel it inside you know usually it's like that oh man it's just such a crazy you. feeling you just you just it's like an instinct man like like a like a like a hunter like a tiger he knows where to go when you go there you wow. know and um and that's like what i did and i rented a room at my best friend's place his mm -hmm. dad he offered me a place to stay and i'm forever thankful and um, he great. said like hey man uh, if you want to stay here you're always welcome you're part of the family and i really appreciate that wow, that's amazing i spent like six months man day and night working on my portfolio learning maya learning moi 3d learning key shot making renders posting on facebook every day i was introduced to the concept art industry to feng zhu mm -hmm. to uh to like, scott robertson which year was this these... seven years ago right eight years ago six years oh, ago it, it's i think in the year 2014 or 2015. wow wow and, um, yeah so it's pretty recent so, it's not that, that far actually in the grand scheme of things maybe but for me it always it's like yeah but i mean <laughs> looking at your work is just amazing man the way the i mean i can totally see like this is part of you you know like it's Thank such you. a short time Thanks. people work for decades and they don't reach to this level so <laughs>
you know well yeah, i guess every, everyone everyone is on his and or her own journey and yeah um different for everyone. i respect everyone's timeline but basically i was like working day and night man in my little room on my little on my laptop that i that i had to save up for to get for school and i was like teaching everything i, I got introduced to the world of concept art like i said mm -hmm. meeting people on facebook meeting people online getting feedback from others joining these hangouts to talk and learn and uh, try new things and yeah. um i i quit school i quit sports um i was like full in and i don't regret a single decision i ever made and um, i'm so focused. happy i did 100 percent focused and eventually i was working from june to december mm -hmm. and i was just building and building and building and i was putting my work on art station which was uh, relatively new at the time mm -hmm. and eventually yeah. i got um a message on art station from uh, star citizen and uh, oh, wow. the art directors wanted me to work on the uh, first person concept weapons that and was I your first yes, project I, yeah so that That's was like amazing. my first real triple a gig uh -huh. and in in the period of staying in my little room i did like a couple of gigs for short films making like a gun for a couple hundred bucks mm -hmm. making a little robot for this company um but that star citizen was like my first real triple a gig that i got mm -hmm. like steadily paid for and i left after eight months um and then the first project after that was uh, working on logan uh, for 20th century fox and everything logan. just went oh up you want worked on logan as well yep that's amazing that's, i didn't uh, know that that's correct um and that was basically the start and it sounds not really um spectacular and it wasn't i just like worked my butt off in that little room made my portfolio better learned got better and eventually a company found value in the work I created and that's where it's all started. That is amazing. Do you think, um, I mean, do you have your first works on your art station or, or these are all updated portfolio pieces? Because I'm like trying to look at your first, like, if I can, yeah, I, I see something from six years ago, like concept design of like an interior sci-fi that's called mm. um, Sci-Fi Corridor number one. And, you know, yeah, like, these 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 pictures. I was walking through a parking lot, and I we had like some pretty abstract buildings, uh, oh, like wow. architecture going on. And I made some pictures on my iPhone, and I uh, like photo bashed them into something interesting. But like, um, I don't have like my portfolio isn't a museum piece with like everything I ever did. If something is not good, I, I take it off. So mm -hmm. if you really want to check my my progress, maybe you can go to my blog spot or uh, maybe um go through my facebook timeline and scroll back and see like all the things i uploaded but people can do that themselves they don't yeah have to, yeah uh, definitely see but, the garbage right now well you cannot yeah. say garbage man i mean because looking at your work i i don't know do you feel like like i'm kind of surprised like with the amount of number of years that you worked is it because mm -hmm. you work so much or you think part of it is talent that you get to this point or what do you think actually makes you like to be able to do these kind of amazing designs <laughs> right it's an interesting subject you know people yeah. say oh you're so gifted oh you're so talented oh god gave you this this talent i'm like there was no pixie dust sprayed over my head when i was born you know to give me this gift even though like let's say i was talented and mm -hmm. i decided to stay in bed all day and play games do you oh, think yeah. <laughs> i would have gotten any work no no, no. i wouldn't yep so someone who works harder and is more consistent and has more persistence and resilience than someone who is oh so talented and doesn't do anything he's gonna get further now i will say you might have people who are talented who also work crazy hard they'll also get further so it's like you know i would say it's a pursued interest and my interest was design and uh, i've been drawn to it my whole life I don't want to like give away the credit for all my hard work to some imaginary word. Um, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I also understand the the effect talent can have, you know, but I, I don't really, I don't think I can judge too much on like the meaning of the word. I don't know. I just mm -hmm. worked a lot. Just worked. And I'm, I'm lucky. I'm at, And I feel lucky that, you know, that the companies found my work valuable enough to reach out to me so 
I never forget that, you know, I'm thankful for the yeah. opportunities and I, and I realized that very much that, you know, people can be working 20 years and not get something they wanted. And some people get it like when they're born with a silver spoon. So, but that's like, I don't know, man, it's out of my control. I think, um, obviously like, yeah, that's a, that's a great thing. Like you remember where you came from, you remember your past, like the story that you share, I yes. think that's, that makes you more, um, how do I say like more mature and also like, um, stronger at what you do. Right. Mm. So you, you were at right. a time that you had to deal with, like, obviously your, your dad was like, you don't, if you don't go to a school, then you have to find a place for yourself and live your life and all that. Right. Which is a good thing. I don't see it as a, <clears throat> excuse me, as a bad thing, because that, that pushes you to discover your real value and real uh, skill set, right? You had to solve right. a big problem at the time. But I mean, remember yeah. those times, I'm pretty sure like, um, it's not something that you can forget because I, I went through the similar things. And mm. it's just every time I think about it, it, it kind of empowers me to uh, work harder for my future for two reasons. First, I don't want to end that. I don't want to be in that situation again, you know, but at the same time, I'm not as scared of discovering new things because I have been through crap before. So seeing crap mm. is nothing new to me. You know what I mean? So absolutely. I mean, but I think looking at your work, I don't think it's just, um, you know, like luck or anything like that. I mean, you have a unique voice. When I look at your designs, um, like Vitaly Bolgarov, right? He's one of the best like you uh, at doing these kind of things. When you look at his design, you can say this is Vitaly. When you look at your design, you, I can say this is yours. Every time you post, uh, I see it on Instagram before even I see your name. Like, you know, when you scroll on Instagram, you see images. I'm like, oh, this is Eden. You know, same with hmm. Mike Nash. There's like a, a taste to it. So I think that's that's a big you, reason. Man. Yeah, I mean, um, definitely. I mean, that's I think one one of the biggest reason like you, you're able to hmm. get the great jobs. I think they they should be. They, I don't know, like they're lucky to work with you, man. <laughs> that's what I can tell you. <laughs> Seeing these, I hope so, man. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I mean, um, yeah. Um, what goes through your mind when you design? Um, like weapons or or even when you worked on mother like you designed the whole robot right for the for the mother the movie um yeah i worked on a couple of things and um first of all everything is a team effort on a project like this you know yeah um, i cannot like claim any any credit for like doing everything mm -hmm. there's many people working many talented people working on things like that and i think uh they all should be credited Yes. What I what what the what the director asked me to do was design the mother robot and also design a military version and design a couple of props and I did that and um, the 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 military droid sitting outside um, they're like 100% my model uh, which is super cool to see by the way that was like yeah. really exciting to see and and there are some elements on the main suit that that I contributed on uh, indirectly maybe um, and and the other way around you know I also got inspired by the other artists working on the production so it's a team effort i want to stress mm -hmm. it's a team effort. and then i mean so so the concept and idea of the robot was it yours or, or if you still think like did you model it or did you design which part of it because i i see your design in it so um well i think it is a matter of specifics on the project because the military droids that were standing outside in the grid formation mm -hmm. right with, yes. the, with the guns yeah i modeled those 100 percent in mm -hmm. moy and i also designed the mother robot um in my style okay and it was and it was up to weta to uh -huh. um, mater materialize the design in a foam suit um oh wow to my understanding to my understanding um christian pierce who is a fantastic designer he mm -hmm. is at Weta and he also did like his 2D versions of his interpretations mm -hmm. as as he was um, designing the initial concepts. And I feel like they, I feel like the mother, the mother version looks more like Christian's work mm -hmm. and the military, the military version is like more my style. Mm -hmm. That's how I would classify them. Mm -hmm. So the one that yeah. I see here, you have one on your art decision. It's called, it's called I am mother droid concept design. That's, that's the, the version of your version, right? Yes. Yeah. It looks great, man. Wow. Thank and you, you. You do product design as well, right? I mean like weapons or well, we are weapons sure. and things like that. Yeah. Do you want to share something about that or? 
What do you want to know? Right, anything you want to share, it's up to you. Like what goes through your mind? How, how did you end up doing that kind of thing from working in game industry and then designing stuff for um, like VFX films and then coming to right. your actual Actu product? Actually, I always liked guns and designing guns. Mm -hmm. And what happened was as a kid, I was always playing like whatever, like soldier with my friends when I was like very young. And mm -hmm. eventually I was starting to draw guns and making them from wood. And um, eventually what I did was during high school, mm -hmm. when I was like uh, 14, 15, I um, really got into homemade stuff like paper craft, uh, homemade materials and uh, crafting stuff together. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would download blueprints of like a pistol model. Oh wow. And I would create I would create sheets of paper stacked on top of each other with glue, grains this way, other grains that way and like stack them up, put them on their weight, wait a couple of days until they were like very hard sheets of paper, hardened paper. Wow. And then I would um, follow the blueprints of the pistol. Mm -hmm. Um stack paper as thick as possible to get like the right thickness of the model mm -hmm. and then i would carve away with the knife any excess material and i would uh, super glue them to get like the hardness and i would put baking soda and super glue on there to and then sand it the the surface to make it like really hard and um, perfect and i would use like springs out of pens and um use wood and things that were laying around in the house taking stuff apart yeah and i made a functional pistol and and I did like <laughs> many more things like that. I was building Viking ships, uh, little scale models of Viking ships and um, uh, airplanes and other other types of things. And that is basically, I think, what has contributed in a major way to my understanding of mechanical design and how wow. things are built and, and made. And, and this was like when I was uh, 14, 15. Eventually, I finished school and um, and then I went into learning 3D and modeling the guns. Mm -hmm. And as I got better at the design aspect of design in general, yeah. I was able to design like uh, guns and hardware and um, many other types of things that got manufactured. So that is basically the roots of where the product design started. Mm -hmm. So did you think yeah. like at the time you wanted to, to be a product designer or you wanted to work on games first? Because games, I guess that was the first job that you had, right? Or it, it was the first job but it but it wasn't like my first dream i uh -huh. wanted to i wanted to get in basically what i wanted is design things and see them come to life that mm -hmm. is like the, the the that is the pure, the dream in the purest form and that was like the the big overarching goal and going more specific into those sub goals i yeah. wanted to work on on a movie i wanted to work on a hollywood production i wanted to work on a triple a game mm -hmm. and i just worked until i achieved every one of those goals and i worked on a game i worked on movies i and then i wanted to grow and do more things i wanted to build like real stuff and then i started uh, machining things and products and oh wow um, that's amazing des des designing more things so it's basically I have an overarching goal. I have many more things I want to achieve, and I, I just like focus on one with laser focus, and mm -hmm. I do everything I can to achieve that goal. And um, that is how I operate. And this year, I want to release a book with my designs. Wow, I never that's amazing! I never, yeah, I never released a book before, and um, I'm focusing 100% on making that happen. I'm self-funding, self-publishing it, so I have maximum control, and. Um, that is like another goal I can I can hit the check mark on. And That's amazing. I'll move on to the next goal I have. Mm -hmm. And you know, at, at your age, like um, I don't know if you want to share your age. Do you want to? I share? turn. Uh, I turn twenty four this summer. So that's that's a lot of I mean, achievements for this age, right? I mean, that shows the dedication. Like, <laughs> man, that that blows my mind. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I guess it depends on perspective. You know, you yeah. got you got world famous rappers you got engineers with crazy patents they're super young you got yeah. people who 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 like start facebook for example so it really depends how you um look at it and it can make you very happy or very yeah. sad <laughs> yes and then it's like your and then it's like your choice how to deal with that information yeah that's true and then um 
how do you set your goals like i mean um the everything you're doing you this like basically you set a goal to to get here right and now you achieved a lot of the things you wanted to do working on games doing product design you know uh working for on, on films and uh, all of these different products now you want to make a book right how do you how do you set a long-term goal like at 24 you achieved all of this right sometimes when you achieve all of your goals it becomes like empty you you could get lost right if you don't have a bigger goal and a long-term plan like 20 years 30, 10 years i think having a long-term vision is the most important and uh -huh. having actionable and and then having actionable steps so you can a uh, laser focus on one thing that will bring you closer to the long-term goal. Mm -hmm. And I would say my long-term goal is a bit more ambiguous. Like it is a goal that um, can be reached, but not necessarily defined in a very specific way. Okay. And I think my goal, my goal, just like many other people is like complete freedom. Yeah. Um, I, I love working on projects with, with companies. I love doing things for other people, but eventually I just want to do whatever the hell I want to do. Mm -hmm. And I want to be able to wake up whenever I want to wake up, visit like whatever country I want to visit, start yeah. a company like whatever the company might be. And I want to have pure freedom to do whatever I like. And if you have big projects in mind, you need big capital. So yes. that means I need to raise capital. So exactly. what do you do? you create smaller plans that are actionable that you do know how to navigate and uh, what steps to take to uh, materialize these projects so you can create profit create capital and then you move on to the bigger goal so all of these things that have been happening in my life are stepping stones to achieve the final goal which is like complete freedom and you know what it may very well be that the journey of reaching that are more exciting than the actual goal and um that might very well be true. And I think that's the case. Mm -hmm. So even if I have like a billion, I want to I want to keep going. I'll never stop working. I love doing what I do. Why do you think you want to keep going? Like a lot of people, they, they say, yeah, I want to get a job, make money and have fun. For me, it's the same. Like I know exactly what you mean. Like when you say I want to keep going, it's not just about money. But um, do you know why? Why the reason is that like even if you're rich, you know, why, what makes you to think that way? Well, so first of all, it's not like I don't enjoy doing nothing. I would love, you know, to be on a on a on a beautiful trip and relax a little yeah. bit if I can and take in my well needed rest. But that is something else. If I if if I win the lottery, you will never, ever, ever see me do nothing on a beach for That's the rest amazing. of my life because you're basically waiting till you're dying. That's true. If you're like, if you're laying on the beach or like on a resort the rest of your life, you're just simply waiting to die. Why That's the hell would you want to waste, waste that time doing nothing? I would love to like, man, if I wouldn't need sleep, I would be working <laughs> 24 seven, but like, I have to that's... sleep. I have to listen to my body. I have to work out. I have to maintain the machine but if i yeah. wouldn't need to i would be behind the screen 24 7 making stuff that is and so that true is like what I, I love and and i will do that till i die 100 percent. i i 100 agree with that because for me as well like i can totally relate to that because mm -hmm. when i do nothing i'm just like feeling i i look for some like something is missing i get nervous i get an, an anxious right i, I want to find something to do i want to get to a project or do something and i'm constantly trying to do different things so yes. I, I totally get the feeling like I, I, and I feel like it's there is a science research that shows that if you have a goal, if you're alive for for a reason, you can live longer. You know, there's like there is a scientific research that was saying, like, for example, um, grandmothers or grandfathers that are waiting for their, um, you know, grandchildren to get married, they stay mm -hmm. alive longer. And then when they achieve that, when they see that they might pass away after that, you know, and that's incredible yeah it shows actually it, it is actually true um i, I was it's kind of blew my mind when i was reading that article so mm. i think having goal is, is super important like even if you're rich right i mean you cannot just sit around and do nothing um it doesn't mean anything it does yes right you can buy pro uh, I mean, material things but 
You can buy happiness. Not you cannot exactly buy happiness. You can buy freedom with money, but happiness is like how you how you use your free time. That that makes you happy. It comes from within, and yes, and I think also what is an interesting point is, um, it is so important to have a vision and a goal in your life, and to have a valid reason to wake up every morning. And if you don't have that, if you're like in limbo and you don't know what is your purpose, like mm -hmm. every ant in a whole colony has a purpose to fulfill and they will do whatever it takes to fulfill that purpose. And if they die, they did so yeah. fulfilling the purpose and it may be protecting the queen and maybe like providing food and, and protection, whatever to the colony. You need to have a purpose and you can say like, oh, we're humans and we can decide for ourselves as much as possible. It's yeah. still like something within us and happiness comes from within. Yeah. And you need to find something that you love doing, man. That's the only way to stay sane and happy and um, and go achieve those goals. We're people. We we want to we want to make targets. We want to hit those targets, you know, and yeah, it's so important, man. I, I agree 100 percent. I mean, um, for me, it was the same. Like at some point, I was feeling empty, and I wanted to to, to make a change. I achieved all of my goals un until like I was, because I, I come from Iran. You know, for me, it was very hard to to move out to get into AAA industry. I have bigger goals, but when I was 32, right. I was like, okay, so um, I achieved all the goals that I wanted to achieve, and I felt empty because I didn't have anything to do, and I was just like doing doing work, going to to the office, and it was just a job at that point. You know, and mm -hmm. then I was like, maybe I should change it. Maybe I should take a new direction and since then I'm changing and I, I feel I'm, I'm happier I make more money as well but it's not just about the money the things that I do mm -hmm. like I don't make from money from this podcast but the experience is giving me like talking to you talking to Mike Nash talking to all the great artists out there it's such a mm -hmm. I don't know like it you cannot put value on this like by money you know what I mean it's it's a right. it's a great experience so yeah I mean I'm 100% I agree with you I mean, since we, we talk about money, I want to ask you this. How do you how do you price your work? Like, how do you tell people to, would you recommend to people to to find the value for the, the type of art they do? Because I'm, I'm looking at your website, actually, if I switch to your website. Do you mind if I share um, no, go ahead, your information? Man. So, hold on a second, if this is... So, I mean, I want to get into this, like, a bit, a bit deeper. Like you have on, on your contact, obviously you have all the information and you have concept design for entertainment, 2,500 euros per day, right? For, mm -hmm. for, for a lot of people, that's a monthly salary. You know what I mean? Right. And you, t you charge that money per day. And I, and I think mm -hmm. you totally deserve it. And I, I, I feel like the way you work and everything, it, it's totally deserved. Or you have like a concept design for product development. It's like minimum 25,000 euros, right? Consulting mm -hmm. 7,500 euros. So, or, mm -hmm. or conceptual development and execution, 10,000 euros uh, start at, it starts at, like if you get a project less than that, you will not accept it basically based on this, right? So, um, or I don't know, like I'm, I'm saying it, but I, I want to ask you, how do you find the value? How did you find the value of your work is this much? And, you know, because a lot of artists, they don't know like how much they charge and the client is like, yeah, charge this much and that's it. They, they give them a price and they're like, we cannot raise the price. Other artists are charging less you know blah blah all all different type of excuses right right <clears throat> um basically what i believe is that this is a free market and you are able to charge whatever you can command for the work that you do and if you provide value to the world whether that is singing design painting whatever yeah there will be someone if you're lucky um, if you have a good price that'll pay it because you help them solve a problem and mm -hmm. the the reason like the bigger the responsibility the bigger the problem is that you have to solve the more you will make the bigger your check will be why does a person who mops floors make so little everybody yeah. can mop floors do we have many astronauts no we don't so they make more as well yeah and it is directly reflective some markets more lucrative than the other but it is directly um reflective of the 
value of the of the problem that you solve and when i hear people saying like oh you know artists or freelance work should start at this price etc etc i sympathize with the message that people should up their standards more right yes so when people are telling online like hey uh, freelance work should start at 500 dollars a day i'm like that is great but it also has to be backed up by quality yeah so just because there is activism going around spewing um like the desire to make 500 bucks a day only because a lot of people think you should make that much that doesn't mean that your work is actually worth that much if you're charging something and a company says like we're not going to pay you that because we have like someone else who does it for less that means they don't think you're worth that money and uh, mm. it's like as simple it's as simple as that it is free market companies have huge amounts of money yes and when they say like no we're not gonna we're not able to do this we're not able to pay you this much what they're saying is we don't think you are worth this much yes we see the number most likely we have the number in our bank account but you're just not worth it to us it is so simple and there are no hard feelings the sole purpose of a company is to make a profit for the shareholders yes exactly. and they will do whatever it takes to get a good deal on their work and there are many many artists and artists in countries where living of standard or standards of living are way lower than here they will reflect that in the free market pricing and also like where labor is done you can see vfx houses in in bangalore india because they're so cheap labor is cheap yeah. so for a job that a lot of people can do don't expect to get like expert money if you specialize and you become an expert at something and you can provide real value and solve real problems that are valuable to companies to solve mm -hmm. you can also charge more to reflect on the size of a problem you solve that is like my opinion on it. Mm -hmm. so it if depends on the sense. problem yeah it that definitely makes sense so i i can't relate to that i know exactly what you mean the 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 only thing that i want to ask is this so let's say there is a designer who is very good like you right you obviously have a lot of work experience years of work work experience you worked on big projects and now you know your value right but if someone is at your level how can someone with your level can discover his value or her value what is the measurement? How, how do I know that I worth this much if I haven't done a work for anyone yet? You know? Well, well, first of all, if you haven't worked for anyone yet, you're not worth shit. You know, you have to establish. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> you, 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 you cannot like come onto the to the market and be like, hey, look at me. I'm worth uh, millions of dollars. No, yes. you have to prove it. You have to prove and back up your claims. You have to do great work. You have to satisfy company needs. You have to solve good problems. Yeah. And dude, I started from scratch too. I made terrible money. I started like when I was studying in my little room, mm -hmm. I made like a uh, like a cool sci-fi gun for a short film for like $400. Does that seem like a crazy project to you? Does that look like rock star money? No. So I had to work hard increase my skill increase the quality and my speed and my expertise um gain knowledge and expertise in fields that i found interesting mm -hmm. so i can become um and go in very narrow into a field of specialization which is so yeah. important because what you what you do by specializing is narrowing down your competition you can be a 3d generalist well look tools have become more and more easy for the whole world so the level of entry the, the the entry level for creating 3d art has has gone lower and lower and lower this yeah. has become like mopping floors i'll use that analogy everyone can make something in 3d nowadays that's why the the supply has gone up and demand has stayed the same i mean maybe it has gone up but like in comparison it's crazy there's so much supply of 3d artists people on Fiverr making logos for nothing. Um, so what does this tell you? It tells you like, hey, you should like go much more narrow, go way mm -hmm. more specific so that you narrow down the competition. Don't have like as many competitors as you. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do is like, hey, what is my competition asking? And so you already have like kind of reference uh, what you're working with.
Yeah. And if you become really good and let's say you are working for two pro you're, you've worked on two projects and every time they said yes to your pricing with no questions asked, mm -hmm. you know, you That's charge too little. Oh, so okay. If, 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 if companies say yes to your quotes every single time for like three times, you know, you need to charge more. Yes. Like you want to find that sweet spot. Like you can overshoot it completely and they'll be like, oh no, man, we, we're not in this ballpark at all. But if you like try to reach out a little more and believe in yourself that you are worth it, believe that you're worth every single penny that you're asking. If you truly believe it, it'll be confident. Uh -huh. You need to be confident telling the client how much money you want to see deposited in your account by that date before you even start working. Yeah. It needs to become second nature. You need to be you need to feel comfortable talking about money and you will see great progress in like your strides uh, trying to improve your income and by that also the, the quality of your life. You want to have a good chair. You want to invest in nice things, have a nice mic to do interviews with. Yes. Um, you cannot you cannot do that by working for peanuts. No, I and, agree 100%. I mean, dude, just the only way you can find out what to charge is to experiment. And I am the well, same. I don't exactly. have any I don't I don't have any secret industry um, secrets, etc. Yeah, I experiment just like anyone else. I have an engagement with a client. I, tr I try something out. Will I get a no? Okay, I know that for next time. And if I get a yes, I'm like, hey, I'm onto something. This means yeah. that there is a company that values what I do so much. They're willing to pay me in thank you notes, which is money. Yes. The amount of money you get paid is a direct thank you 100%. for the problem you you've solved for them. And so you don't sell you don't your time, you sell your skill set because that's a mistake yes. artists do. They just try to sell their time and they're like, I charge $50 an hour. That's absolute bullshit. You know, like $50 an hour. I mean, you, well, you, you spend like 15 even, years practicing and you're good and then you sell it for $50 an hour. I mean, one thing I don't like about um, time-based pricing is that let's say you're very fast let's say you have to create a robot and you exactly. can do it in two hours exactly. and you're charging 50 an hour you got 100 bucks <laughs> well how 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 stupid is that exactly in, instead i highly recommend value-based pricing and there are a couple of great people that i highly recommend for you to listen to and they're also everyone i want to recommend is on my intel page on my website mm -hmm. you've got blair ends david c baker um chris doe all of these experts in their fields of business wow um, they really help, help you increase your knowledge and also how to position yourself how to strategize properly in order to gain um more wins in like your business endeavors it is so important to also become familiar with the language of business when you yes. want to increase your life financially you're not just an artist or designer you're an entrepreneur basically at this point because if you don't understand the value of your business and your art, then I mean, you can be the best and just nobody's going to pay right. you, right? Right, I guess. I mean, it, it really depends on how far a person wants to go, you know? Yeah. Um, there, like, you, you, not everyone needs to be an entrepreneur, entrepreneur doing crazy things. There are also people who are perfectly content with um, going, clocking in you know at their at their job yeah um doing the work getting the feedback from the from from their from their boss go that's, on a coffee yeah. break go back home eat dinner sleep and repeat that's totally fine and if you're happy with that i respect you and i commend you yeah if you want more if you want to grow if you want to increase the quality of your life you need to know how to make more money and 100 um, percent. that's like that's like you got to play the game of life man and you know, I was talking to James Bosby, the owner of 1024 3 he's scanning a store. He is saying the same thing, mm -hmm. like artists are actually undercutting the market on a huge scale, disrespecting it's themselves. It, it is stupid. It's ridiculous. Like $2 for a tutorial or I mean, you go to Fiverr, it's yeah. just like the prices are funny, like $5. I'll design a logo for you. Come on, man. You know, it doesn't matter. It's, what a, ra it's, a, it's, it's, it's a race to the bottom. It is, yes. Everyone is shooting themselves and corporations are like, yeah, great. They're, they're trying to enjoy yeah. it. And the quality goes down, right? I mean, if you don't respect your time, 
you automatically actually downgrade the, the way you work, actually, I think. Because I think, to me, um, by the way, like a lot of majority of the artists that I know, they just say, I don't care about money, which is a stupid statement. You know, it's, it's, it's wrong to say I don't care about money because, you, as you said, you, you get a thank you note, which is money, which is a green dollar, right? Yes. Or yes. euro. So they, they pay you for your time. And if you don't care about your time and the, the effort that you put in, then they're going to take advantage of you, basically. It's just as simple as that. I totally agree. One thing I would also add is what I find completely ridiculous is when people are like, when people feel ashamed of making oh, a certain man. amount of money. Yes. Like people, they're like, um, can you even charge this much? Oh no, that's too much. You cannot do that. I'm like, oh my God, so <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it is. It stu is <laughs> It is, and I understand that they experience some type of anxiety because they never worked with these amounts before, but dude, it is, why is it not like a thought that I have or like an observation that I made in the whole global spectrum of talent, you got musicians, like, I mean, successful ones, yes. you got lawyers, you got, you know, like um, uh, specialists, engineers, um, all of these people they are so expensive and no one bats an eye you know oh lawyer yeah. 500 an hour i gotta pay like i gotta pay like a 10k deposit just to be able to talk with you and that's like all okay and everyone accepts this but as soon as it comes to a visual artist it's like oh my god you have to work for peanuts and it is ridiculous because we are also a specialized group of people who really got a skill and i think it is ridiculous um just to give you some perspective for example so you got a whole movie where it is no one bats an eye that jennifer lawrence gets like paid 55 million for like a role yeah and and like a vfx artist is making like 100k whatever has to do crazy crunch and i'm like couldn't you take like half of Jennifer's salary, and you just can like give definitely give give bonuses to like all yeah. the people who worked on it, and and then like <laughs> she's left with over twenty million bucks, and um and wouldn't that be enough? So this logic or this belief that there is no money is completely ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. There is money. Companies have big fat pockets, and they can pay you no problem. The point is that they don't respect you. They think you're never going to stand up. The industry will never stand up. Um, I don't expect the industry anytime soon to have like this big revolution where all of a sudden we're becoming like crazy rich. Yeah, it's not going to happen. So it is your responsibility as an individual to improve the quality of your life, become specialized and demand the respect um, to be able to charge that much and improve your life quality. And if you don't respect yourself, how, do, how can you expect other others to respect you, right? I mean, absolutely. And uh, some people may have like a different level of respect than others in terms of like how much they should be worth and how much others should be charged and how much um, the industry standard should be. Um, so, I mean, it's something completely crazy, in my opinion. And that's why I don't adhere to any rules. Yeah, there is no there. There is no such thing as, oh, that's too much. No, bullshit. I can yeah. charge whatever the hell I like. And if the market wants to pay for it, I'm lucky and I will take it. Thank you. You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. So, and and I think that also affects the way you work, right? I mean, I, 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 I'm going to say this, correct me if I'm wrong. I kind of feel like since you're, you learn to charge more, you're improving your quality because you know that as long as you're scalable and, and you can do more and get paid more for it, then you're willing to actually you know, go higher and higher and become better and better and design unique stuff, you know, to try different markets, right? So I think it, it they, they kind of, the, they get, the way you get it, get paid for your work and the quality of your work, they're connected. You know what I mean? Like it pushes you to the next level. Absolutely. You need, you need like stepping stones. You need like to, to increase the benchmark every time. And if you don't increase and you become, com and you become stagnant, do you yeah. know what happens to stagnant water? It rots. Exactly. So you want to keep moving. You want to keep moving up. And um, sometimes you reach a plateau and sometimes it takes like five years. You're stuck. 
Yeah. Sometimes it happens. And then maybe you get like a breakthrough and you continue and you go sky high and that would be amazing. And um, but it is something that needs to be actively monitored. You have to zoom, be able to zoom out of your own situation, get a good bird's eye view to see like, hey, how am I actually doing? Can I improve this? How long I've been, have I been making this? Have I mm -hmm. experienced constant growth? What kind of percentage rate am I growing at? Do I want to improve that? How do I do this? Who has the money? Where is the money? Go trace it. Um, see like, and, and I mean, by the way, all of what I'm saying, this is like learned from other people. I'm not like some genius who came up with this. I just look, observe, connect dots and apply it to my own life. Do you read a lot of books or not? I mean, yeah, pretty much. So I got into I got into reading books, so it's a good habit, like business books, life books, and all that stuff. Sure. And I think they, they improve you because I since I started doing that, I, I imp improved my income. Um, right. I, I I get better projects. You know, um, I don't have to mm -hmm. waste my time on stupid stuff anymore. You know what I mean? Fantastic. Yeah. So I I think that's also one thing that people um, artists you know artists are usually as far as I know they're just connected to like doing good art. I want to I want to enjoy my art and they don't care about their finances they don't care about their um you know knowledge about business and how to improve their their future you know things like that they don't read books as far as I know like I mean right. not many actually do that right I mean they, they read maybe a story books and things like that but I, I rarely see artists like you telling me like I read business books or about entrepreneurship or or life improvement you know I mean I guess, I don't know, man, like maybe sometimes people don't know what they miss. Maybe people are complacent. They like the comfort zone. They yeah. don't like to go against the grain and they, they just want to go with the stream. And the uh, dude, only dead fish go with the stream. I don't like it at all. I don't like conforming to the standard. I want to set new standards, move myself uh, forward in any way I can. and make 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 pitfalls make crazy mistakes fail mm -hmm. stand up again and just continue and i will never give up and so shouldn't anyone else but that is hard and you know all of the people who they're like armchair experts sitting on their facebook timelines complaining and all that stuff but they don't take actions ideas are worthless without execution so you can you can read as many books as you like and yeah. it may all be in here in that thick skull. Yeah. But if you don't take any action, nothing is going to happen. So doing it is actually the most difficult thing. You know, you can learn as much as you want, but you have to go out there, man. You have to make those calls, do those negotiations, fail, l reflect, learn and reapply again in the next time. And that is how you make progress. And there is no other way. And a lot of people don't want to don't want to do the work, man. People are lazy. People yeah. are complacent. People are afraid of change and that is fine. And you know what, like in the end, you're here, like you're a soul on earth and you yes. want to like live your life the best way possible. And I'm not here to tell other people how they should do it. They're free to do whatever they like. But what I know is that I want to, I want to keep growing and that's what I'm about to do. And that's what I'm going to do. And that's what you're doing. I've yeah. heard what you've said. And that's great. And you should keep going and keep increasing the quality of your life by becoming more skilled, more valuable to the world. Yes. And there is enough wealth on earth. There is so much wealth on earth. Like I even like, even though the prices on my websites may look high um compared to like industry standards i'm actually a little ashamed they're on there because i don't think it's enough i agree with you 100 percent. I, mean, I wanted to tell you that you said uh, they look i mean talking to you i don't think they're high high to be honest i think i'm pretty sure you're gonna raise your prices again i i can see that and there is there is logic behind it it's not just i'm gonna raise it because i want more you know there is um i didn't come up with a saying i don't know who did actually but what I charge today is a discount for what I'll charge tomorrow. <laughs> and I fucking, That's great. And I fucking and I fucking love that quote. <laughs> However, I mean, it is so easy to talk about, oh, look at me and look what I charge and blah, blah, blah. What is important is that you back it up with actual quality and yeah. value. 
And um, and I guess like people are so easy to forget that when they listen to this, they're like, oh my God, what are they talking about? No, you need to be fucking good at what you do. You need to develop techniques. You hmm. need to provide value and, oh man, like take a shot every time I say value. It's so important. You're gonna be like blacked out. <laughs> so, yeah. It's so important, man. I, I agree hundred percent. You know, actually what I want to ask you is like, <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Again, like talking about money, I think this is a huge subject. I like, even if you talk about it for days, it's not you're you're not gonna find the the solution, right? So there's like so much information you can give to to get it. How do I say like yeah. to educate people on this? It's it's a mm -hmm. it's a never ending topic. I mean, one of the yes. things actually I notice is like people like you doing concept design, robotic designs, you know, f uh, product designs. Like you have a you have a hardware store that you're selling knives and muzzle brakes and um guns part right so and you design them um basically um but what i what i discovered is like people that do stuff like you they they can charge more they charge more i don't know why that what the reason is right but if there's a character artist doing the best character art um do you think they can also increase their prices to like let's say two thousand dollar per, per day for character to design a character for game or you know, environment artist who is like designing environment pieces for mm -hmm. games, can they charge their, their actually increase their price to $1,500 a day instead of like $300 per day or $400 per day? This is a very important question. And because basically the question is, hey, is are these prices or is this strategy applicable to me? Exactly. In my industry or like whatever industry the person is working in. And I would say we don't know until you try. So yeah. you should try, first of all. You should try to be disruptive. You should be confident also in the work that you do. Hire a good attorney who will represent your interests and protect them in the contracts that you sign. Mm -hmm. Because... Um, and I know this is already going in a bit of a tangent, but I'll come back to the point. I promise. No, that's fine. Um, that's like great. one one thing that is already important is like people misunderstand the relationships with companies. Usually, people like artists. Artists are one of the worst business people ever. Oh yes, and that's fine. Yes, and I, I get it. Yeah, but they they feel, and this has been done culturally throughout the years because. Basically, they just accepted being, you know, a company's bitch and you aren't. No. All, all that it is, is people think it is the artist versus the big evil corporation. Mm -hmm. And all a corporation is, is a group of people trying to make a profit, man. That's all. Yes, there's, no, exactly. there's, no, there's no emotions. There's nothing personal. They just want something from you. They'll give you money and yeah. they'll make more profit after that if they did a good job. That yeah. is the only reason a company exists. So there is no evil um, theories going on. There is no evil plots. So you have to understand very carefully that everything a business relationship is, is a bilateral or bilateral transaction between one company, to say it. between one entity and another. Yeah. And what they want, they want your asset or your service, your consulting or expertise in return for currency. And that also means you get to decide or you get to negotiate what are the terms? How do you want to get paid? When yeah. do you want to get paid? Um, what are the what are the negotiations or what are the conditions for like the NDA? Do you get to have like a portfolio clause? Do you get to show your work? You have all of these possibilities on the, at the negotiation table. Mm -hmm. This is the moment to voice yourself, to, to let them know what do you want out of the company. And you have the power to say no, and people forget that usually. Um, it is not like this is what the company puts in front and you either take it or leave it. No, fuck that stuff. They will negotiate with you. If you have an you. attorney, if you have an attorney, exactly. Well, if they come to you, you have the upper hand in the first place, you know? Yeah. Um, because they want something from you. And then you're like, oh, really? You want something from me? Well, this is these are my terms. If you can accept these terms, I'm comfortable in helping you. So you get a good attorney. And Do you have an attorney yourself? Ones. 
Absolutely. That's and, great. Um, you get an attorney, mm -hmm. you let him or her uh, know, like, what, what are your interests? What is important to you in a contract? Do you want to have great portfolio rights? Great. Do you want to get paid normally, normal speed? Dude, like net 30, biggest garbage in the world. Um, you don't go into a pizzeria, eat the pizza and be like, hey, I'll, I'll come back in a month, pay you. No, you <laughs> yes. pay right then and there. Yes. And um, you don't have to accept any of these ridiculous uh, excuses from companies. Yeah, we have a payment cycle. No, you don't. You can make a payment to my bank account right now. So that's how you do I it, can, right? Man, I mean, <laughs> it is you have to think for yourself and decide how you want to conduct business. What does it take? What do they what does the company have to do in order to work with you? Because listen, a dream project is not a dream project anymore when you have to make all of these amends. Oh, man, and, um, you're saying it the best way up. possible. Thank you. But it is a dream project when everything went perfectly and you are both happy and yes. the negotiation table is the place to do it. Once you sign it, you have to uphold your part of the deal. Don't complain like a little bitch. You have to do a great job, deliver, and don't like cry afterwards like, oh my God, this is so bad. No, that is your fault. You signed it. You make sure you get like everything you want to do before. Mm -hmm. and, um, <laughs> and you'll be surprised how many times you can get a yes by simply asking artists wow. are like afraid they don't even dare to ask dude ask if you don't ask you'll never get it price test you oh the, and this is like the final thing i'll say you never you never ever will get anything you deserve you get what you negotiate yes you don't deserve anything until you negotiate it basically Right, you need to push for it. It's not just like I, I, there is actually one of the things I say is like when people ask me, I, I say you need to know your value before anyone else knows your value, right? So if you just say yeah, whatever right. you give me, then they will give you whatever they want to give you. It's not just like um, they will give you what what you thought about, right? Right. So um, you know. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask you, how do you market your work? Like, um, do they, do, they, do your, your clients, they come to you or do you have a specific way marketing yourself? Because mm. it's kind of um, one of the skills that we have to master as artists is to be able to sell, right? To sell our art, understanding how sales work, how marketing works. That's a good question. Although I'm not an expert at it because I don't really do that. Um, whenever basically, when I made my portfolio and uh, I got reached out by Star Citizen to, to work and then mm -hmm. I got reached out by 20th Century Fox and by Universal, etc. Um, I've been like very lucky that clients have come to me usually and now I simply um, get like emails of companies mm -hmm. who want to work with me. Like however they found me, it's basically on the internet. I got a pretty good reach on Instagram. It's nothing crazy. I got... Yeah. A pretty good art station profile but that's basically it and i just get emails and i pick who i want to work with um and I, i've also been trying to do a lot more filtering so for example on i get a lot of messages on art station so now i put like a filter up there that says like only business inquiries and and then it says like um i only do like concept design engagements from like 15k and up mm -hmm. and um and like it like scares away a lot of people who don't have that money anyway and i'm like yeah. great don't message me because before i did that i got like a ton of emails of people who had like a hundred dollars and wanted like to have a robot for me and i'm like <laughs> you know i, I that's disrespectful I wanna, man I'm, i don't want to spend time dealing with this so I, I i try to make it as transparent as possible and the outcome which has been amazing is companies read like the requirements i have to work with me like you can see on my website yeah and if they are really serious about it they'll they'll contact me and usually it is a success because they know how much i cost so money is no issue anymore now if the project is a good match or not that's something i can find out after and uh it may be not a good fit and i'll recommend them to someone in my network um mm -hmm. if that is the case but 
I think that's like the filtering I've done. It, it has helped a lot. But in terms of reaching out to clients, how to make a good uh, proposal, email, etc. Like, I wish I could help, but I don't know how to write those perfectly because I haven't done it really. Hmm. But but obviously, like, um, you have been successful at it. So I mean, um, do you always like get overwhelmed with work? Like, do you have, I mean enough work to reject uh, companies or is it like with these prices people might think okay he might get 10 days of work and not have work for two months is that the case or you you always have projects because i mean I, as i said like people are scared of trying big numbers right but um so, personally i think it works actually what i want to hear is from you um what you can do is you can strategically price yourself so low or like at a certain level which is a bit lower yeah that allows you to have a fully booked agenda so you have work every day of the week and that yeah. is great you know i don't like that however mm -hmm. i like to work less and make more i agree um because because i very much value my own time i got my own projects i want to work on yes um so i'd rather take on a couple of projects that i selected um that I want to work with, mm -hmm. do the work, get paid like um, a good amount and um, like enjoy my time, relax mm -hmm. and uh, work on my other projects, etc. But like, I definitely value being able to spend time with myself. It's not like all about the it's not like all about getting as much clients as possible. I don't I don't care about that it, because eventually I want to have ultimate freedom. I want to work less and less for people and do more of my stuff. And if that makes money, that's perfect, yeah. obviously. But um, so, yeah, I guess that's how I do it. And then um, um, let me actually see. I wanted to ask you something else. Um, how do you how do you say which project is good for you? Which project is bad? If you see a good project, but they say, OK, um, like we I, we see your price. It's three thousand dollars per day, but we can't pay two thousand dollars per day. But the project is amazing. It's just something like you have full control over it. Do you do you have like um, exceptions in I mean different times? Like yes, based on absolutely. The project? Absolutely. Um, if a project is is great and I also like it, I will make amends to like my requirements because to be honest, they're quite stiff. Yeah. Uh, it's like you know high prices, uh, upfront payment um like all of these requirements and i know that they're pretty stiff but it's basically like to filter out the the companies who aren't serious and if a company comes to me and i get it and i form a good connection with them and they're like hey man we would love to work with you um we don't have like the amount of capital to spend at once can we maybe do it like in in like finance it in, in parts mm -hmm. i can be forgiving it's not like i'm a, I'm a killer yeah. Uh, whale you know i'm not like so i'm not that cold um but it has to be definitely a project that if they require me to make amends and uh lessen my requirements i do want something in return and that is like more freedom more control more say you know mm -hmm. so i never give up i never give up anything just for free like yeah. if you want to have it cheaper i want more control it's a trade if you want to it's it, exactly nothing. I'll never give something just for free like that. That's great. That's exactly what I'm, what I, what I think it should be done. Um, do you uh, did you have any projects that they don't give you any feedback? They're like, okay, you have full control. You design it, and that's it. Like you design it, and you say this is the design. This is why it should be this way, and they don't give you any direction. Basically, did you happen to be in that yes. situation? Absolutely, and um, it is great. I love freedom like that. But however. I, I do like to strategize and set things up for success. So mm, for yeah. example, for example, what I really hate, I don't like is the client tells me what they like. I design it, I deliver. And then all of a sudden they give me like a crazy curveball, and what their feedback forced me to like start over completely beca oh, wow. because it was like such, su such a fundamental change. I'm just giving you an example. Yes. Yes. I don't I don't want that to happen because that kills like the entire vibe for me. So what I require from my client is let's say I have to design a rifle. 
Yes. I tell them like, hey man, I'm like a factory. You give me like the spec list of all the requirements it needs to have. I will make a design solution that will check all the boxes and it will look great. And this will be a successful design. If, 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 if you come with like a crazy curveball in the end, that is totally fine. But you'll have to hire me for more work. You know, it's going like to be a pay you. new project. Of course, obviously. Yes. So I want like as much information as possible. So I know like there are no surprises. I have like all the data that I need to provide a successful design. And I don't start work before I have what I need. And it also says on my website, like I need like this and with all the required, with all the requested material. And, uh, and that means like all the information I need for a design. Yeah, so that is how I work. So basically, if, if they change their work based on the feedback, you will charge them again. There is there is no, which is which is how it should be. I agree with this 100% because you're spending your time and talent, right? But there's like a lot of like artists I know like they, they are forgiving. They're like, okay, I need to do the feedback feedback because it's feedback. Well, it, it really depends. So let's say I have to design a rifle and um, and they don't like where a certain screw is, right? Yeah. It's like for a game, whatever. I'll tell them like, hey, you can do that yourself. You can move that screw yourself. I'm too expensive to move a screw. I'm oh a screw man, mover. that's great. <laughs> I love that. So, um, and but I mean, it makes sense because why would you hot? Why would you rent a Ferrari to go in a thirty zone? Yes. Right? Yes. You you get like a different car that is suited for that speed. I mean, yes. so what I, I mean, I just try to follow logic, and I, I'm also not here to like um, get as much money from a company as possible. Mm -hmm. I want to deliver a quality product that the company is happy with yeah and for an honest price um and if i know that hiring me again to move like a couple of things here and there can be done much cheaper by someone in-house or by someone else who can who is like much cheaper to, to solve these lesser problems um it's not worth my time to to worry about little things like that you know and it's yeah my, my time is be my, my time is better spent really solving the bigger issues um which i love to do anyway so that yeah. is how i think about that and then you know the other thing i wanted cute. to ask you yeah that that's 100 percent. like it's it's the best answer uh, i could hear to be honest with you i, I love that and um mm -hmm. you know i say the same thing like if it's just weird like if, if someone is an expensive artist if you ask him to do uvs for for games or the topology but the, the you're paying like 700 800 a day 900 a day to that artist that's like it just doesn't make sense, right? So that's exactly the best an, um, analogy you gave, right? I mean, the screw, moving the screw, you can do it, it in it, house, it's it, going to cost you $2. <laughs> ex it, yeah, it, it doesn't make sense to, to hire the same artist uh, to do like the UV mapping yes. when there are like people in India who are specialized in UV mapping who can do it like in a couple of minutes because they're so skilled and specialized at, yeah. in, in that service. Um, so that's why I think like... I try to apply logic, man. Like, what is the most is. logical thing to do? And I also try to like tell that to my clients. And I also learn from clients. I'm not like the master here. I know like how I like to work. And I, I, I love communicating with the client and coming up with the best solution yeah. that uh, both people are happy with. Because I don't want people to think like I'm like a really bossy person who is like, well, this is the only way you can work with me. Um, that is not true. Um, I want. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for the company's interests and my interests and that is providing a beautiful solution that is exactly all I care about. and you know what's interesting like um i mean when i when yeah you you charge thirty thousand dollar per day but it's not necessarily really expensive because if you can deliver the same product they're looking for for a great quality in like two weeks three weeks it's better than like someone who takes like three months and there's like constant feedback and energy. Five people are giving feedback and pushing and pushing, and it's not there yet. So it's you're essentially ch yeah. charging cheaper. You're actually getting paid less comparing to the long-term payment some studios pay to or or product designers like they pay to. I don't know, like cheaper artists, Abs right? Absolutely, but I I do have like a minimum engagement, so it's not like 
oh, we, we just want to have you for two days. Like, no, I'm not. Yes, gonna, yes. I'm not going to spend my time uh, learning about the company, learning about the whole project, only to work two days and and say goodbye. Yeah. Like, uh, I really, I really want to. I care about creating a good connection with the company, and create long term relationships with the yeah. company. Um, to really, it, it just requires more input from both sides to create a good relationship and that cannot be done in like two days. It's just not possible. Yes. Um, especially in a, in a, in a position where you have like so much, um, where your, where your words have so much power in terms of input and how things will look like and work, etc. Um, this is not a quick two day gig. I want it to be like a much deeper, it's a business uh, have much uh, de- relationship, have much, de- yes, ha- have much deeper meaning. And it just takes a little more time to work. Yeah. So, I mean, based mm-hmm. on what you said, do you have like your clients, they come back to you again and again and again, do you have any clients for like, let's say work with you for two years or for, for long term, like with these products? Absolutely. I, I, I have a couple of very great. Um, repeat clients, that's how I call them, mm-hmm. um, who I've worked with before, who loved the interaction, who loved the process together, who um, then also decide to hire me again or for a longer period of time. So I definitely mm-hmm. have those and I um, I really value those clients because it is just cool to build a, a long-term relationship with a company or a person yeah. or a client who you can uh, come back to. And especially once you know how someone works together, uh, the second like time you come around, it is familiar it's great fun yeah. and i highly recommend it and i think if you if you can cater to a couple of repeat clients they get more privileges um they can um they're more valuable so that's like also you can ease up to them a little bit more because you know how it's like to work with them and they provide you with with great value and so you want to return the favor by also yeah. doing a bit more and exceed expectations mm-hmm. yeah definitely and then the other thing i wanted to ask you i think this is an important question um, and you, you correct me if I'm wrong. I think the the most important part of this job is like communicating, right? So how do you make your clients? How do you communicate? Obviously, I can see like you're a very good communicator. You you have like when you talk, um, everything you say makes sense. So you have a very good skill on that. But when it comes I'm, to I'm your happy client, to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're skillful on that. I can tell you that. Like it's easy to to hear you and un- understand you. And you're to the point, which is like what I say to everyone. When you work with clients, be to the point. Like, don't just screw things around and, you know, don't waste time. Just go to the point immediately and make them connect with you. So when it comes to you, how do you how do you tell them? Like, obviously, well, they they see your website, the prices are there, everything is there. But there's like, I'm pretty sure like they will come to you and they want to communicate with you to make sure like, Obviously, it's a business thing, right? If they are even okay with it, they want to make sure that they're, they are pay, paying the right person and hiring the right person. So what is your communication um, skill set or, I don't know, like strategies to basically make these clients to come to you and stay with you, right? Because sometimes they might, I don't know, like people might say, okay, if I say this, they might think I'm egoistic or I'm too expensive because I, I think too big of myself or th- things like that, right? But obviously, the way you communicate, I, I can see like it's. I don't. I don't get that sense at all. You know, it's super professional and everything, which is important. So, do you have any st- specific strategy? I don't know if you want to share it or. I don't have any trade secrets or anything, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, what I think, in terms of communication, hmm, is it natural? Maybe. I th- well, yes, I think it is natural, but also treat a client like you wish to be treated. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so simple, man. Like if you wanna if you wanna have like clear instructions, make sure that you also talk clearly to them. If you um, have any any questions or anything you want to clear up, just ask, communicate, and um, if if. I bet that you want to get paid fast, right? So, well, yes. how should a client how should a client treat you? Well, also do the same thing. So, I guess like the, that that main principle is like the, the the father of them all in terms of interaction. Like, be respectful, mm-hmm. uh, communicate clearly, be be to the point. Don't beat around the bush all the time because that's not going to bring you anywhere. But I feel like the a, a, like the standard of communication and the level of respect 
already begins before the call starts. Um, it is already visible in the way you communicate through email. Yeah. How does one converse? How does one uh, communicate? What kind of stance do they have? How do they use language? Uh, these are all very important. Um, I think they they the level of respect for each other is already established before you even have the first meeting. And then obviously, if you have the meeting, like like a video call, for example, to get yeah. to know your client and talk about the issue that they have, that they came to you for to solve, by the way. Yes. So it, it is already a token of respect that they come to you because they believe you are so valuable um, that you might have the power to solve their problems. Um, so you should treat it as such treat it with respect always be comfortable you don't have to be i mean personally if you're like a nice person it, yeah. it sounds a bit um i don't know like it, it sounds a bit um i'm not sure if it has like such a positive feeling attached to it anymore like you're not doing anything like, special not, yeah you know you know what i mean and i believe like you, you can be you can be the respectful. nicest person, but they don't pay you necessarily what you want. It's I not mean, just that. I don't really know how to communicate that point. I mean, you don't have to be nice to a client. Yes, you know what I mean. It's, you're it's here. Client, you're right? he, you're here for you're here for business. Yes, there's no and friendship. That's why basically. I also, no, and I mean, you can create one. You can create yeah. a great relationship, but I mean, things. You should always remember it's business. They want to make a profit. You want to make a profit. Like yeah. It's a transaction. That's what you always have to remember. Yep. And, and I think it is very easy for uh, clients and, and designers or artists or whatever to like hop on a quick call and be like, hey, bro. And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm not your bro. <laughs> yes. You know, but it it happens all the time. And yeah, that's not good. I think like if you can uh, re refrain yourself from doing that and really keep that business relationship um, stand professional up, yeah it you'll you'll get like way more respect and um they will also respect your time if you can stay on a call for hours and talk about the weather like no one cares about the weather like you answer your you ask your questions you answer their questions and you hang up and you go back to your work and by the way if you're like calling hours and hours with your client they think like what is this guy doing is he actually that busy no um I actually agree with that. Like, so, if you're busy, you don't yeah. even have time to get into meetings or communicate or message. You, you're busy. Yeah. Your mind is focused. Exactly. Right? Um, so I would even suggest. Mm -hmm. Let's say you don't. Let's say you don't have any job. Yeah. And you, you do have all the time in the world. Don't 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 like chat like with your clients and call for ages. Um, like you should be busy with like getting a job, making more portfolio work. So, I mean, in a sense, there is no time for you to have like crazy conversations. Uh, you should like, if you don't have a job, you should be busy with getting a job and making portfolio work. Yeah. And if you're really busy, there is no need to make an excuse to, to talk and, you know, like crazy amounts of hours. So, um, that is like what I would say in terms of communicating be respectful treat people like you want to be treated keep it like keep it business there's no emotions yeah. if they get like upset etc like always stay calm it'll it'll be um you'll have like the you'll have like a much stronger position um yeah. if you're if, if you're the one who can stay calm and um rational etc so keep it separated at all costs it is yeah, so and, important and there is a difference between ego and confidence confidence means like you know what you're doing and you don't have to over explain yourself ego means like mm -hmm. i'm better than you I'm, I'm looking down on you you're shit. don't talk right. to me right so there's a boundary there that people people actually miss it and um, they could also lose a project because they might be perceived as like they're egoistic you know and i think ego is like not a professional thing so um that's something that people sure. should try to avoid i i i, I would generally agree and I also think like, you know, um, displaying arrogance and, yes. um, and, and e egoistic behavior and all of these are not good in general, also yeah. in your personal life. However, um, I mean, I hear like from, from, from friends and et cetera, like 
in the industry, like people going around my back, like saying like, oh, like, what does Aiden think of himself and all this stuff? I'm like, you know, that is all fine. But in the end, you shouldn't really care too much what other, other people yeah. uh, think and say about you. Like you have your goal, you have your vision and you're doing whatever it takes to, mm -hmm. um, to accomplish that vision and dream of yours. And yeah. if you are good and, um, and, and people work with you, that should be proof enough that you're not an asshole. You know what I mean? Yes. If you respect uh, the client's time and deliver what you promise, that's that's. I think that's enough to to show that you value the relationship, right? I know absolutely. But also, like on the ego thing, mm -hmm. um, um, just because like someone thinks you are, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. Like it doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Like, yes. Yeah. I I never think about that. To be honest, I don't care. That's, I couldn't care yeah. less. Yeah, I agree. And like the, the, yeah, the more people talk about someone, the better. Perfect. Let them let them spread the word. You know, <laughs> that's that's a marketing strategy, basically, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, do you when you work like um, do you deliver like fast? Do you focus on the work? Um, how do you how do you spend your time like during the when you get a project? How do you do you take a rest? What is your strategy when you work? How do you plan it? Like when you work on a project, let's say you have a project for 10 days. How do you plan the, the, the job? Do you constantly work without nonstop and... It really depends on the project. Mm -hmm. um, when it's an easy project. So, for example, I'll, I can give you two examples. Like, let's say I have to design something that is easy for me. And they ask me like, hey, um, how much do you need? If I know that it's going to take me a week to do, mm -hmm. I'll tell them like, give me three weeks and I can deliver. So now I yeah. got three weeks. I got enough time to make the thing beautiful, perfect. Yes. Have a bit of a rest hang out with my friends, you know, like fresh in my mind, go back yeah. to the design, check if it's still good, make any changes and um, deliver on time. And I'll provide a, pro a quality product. Yes. And hopefully and hopefully exceed expectations. And what I did to myself is I, I created enough overhead for me mm -hmm. to to make sure that I there won't be any stress there won't be any overworking. There won't be anything that negatively affects the outcome of the project. Yeah. So you have to strategize ahead, think ahead and set yourself up for success. And that is like one way to do it. Another way is I have a project that I have to do. And even if it takes me one week to do it, let's say I, it's the same project. Give me three weeks cool sometimes it happens that i won't do anything until the last couple of days because you have to and, make it in uh, your mind right i have to make it in my mind i have to I think know about the feeling design. exactly so, and sometimes i just need some time it's and the however brain. when i pr when and when i promise the the deadline Mm -hmm. I mean, sometimes I can ask for more time if it's like really needed. I mean, but anyway, like sometimes I'm like behind the computer 18 hours. I, I don't sleep. I just continue, continue, continue until it's done. And I just brute force myself through it. Um, so, I mean, it's not like all fabulous. Sometimes I yeah. mismanage myself. I also make mistakes. Sometimes I screw up big time. Well, wow. I mean, in, ter in terms of in terms of timing, and then I have to pay for it with not sleeping, etc. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it, it happens both, man. Sometimes it's like the easiest job ever, and I take my time and I and I do well. Sometimes um, I, I mismanage a little bit, or I underestimated or overestimated, and that can result in good things. But I mean, everything happens, and I'm just, dude, I'm just another dude, man. I'm trying to make yeah. a beautiful design, and I'm not, I'm not a robot with perfect management. I also have another, you know, I have a life, and. Yes. Um, I, mean, I also make mistakes, but I but I do try to make it happen well. You know. Yes, I mean, yeah, I mean, your portfolio shows it's a it's a good. I mean, I don't see bad quality work there, um, so that's a that's the sign. The the thing is, like, I I guess I know exactly what. Huh. Thank you, I said. Ah, uh, sure, man. 
I know exactly what you mean when you say sometimes I, do, I cannot do anything for two weeks and then finish the project in the, in the last two, three days because you need to have the creativity juice, right? Sometimes it doesn't come to you. Uh, that's why I don't like like forcing artists to constantly work because if someone is not creative and on a, at, a, at the moment, you know, you may not get anything out of that person. And then if you let that yeah. person to, to think, to digest, I, I think biggest part of design or even character creation comes 80% is like the thoughts that you, you, you actually do it before you do the project. I think any, any creative mm -hmm. project, like even music, you know, like I practice piano, I play piano and then I know like you don't have to always practice on, on the piano. You can practice without the piano in your head. You know, it's, it's, right. it's a, it's a brain game. It's a mind game. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, I don't know. That's, is that true to you? Yeah. I mean, I think I can connect with that. Definitely. Um, hmm. Sometimes, man, it just doesn't come, you know? Yeah. And uh, that's totally fine. But what is helpful? And when you recognize these patterns, mm -hmm. that is where you step in and be like, hey, give yourself a bit more time. Like, cre make the scope a bit bigger. Give yourself three weeks instead of five days. Yeah. So that you can create the, the overhead time and the, and the padding mm -hmm. and the buffer. So things like these can happen and occur naturally, and you still have enough time to finish and uh, finalize a successful product. So hmm. um, there is no such, I mean, I hate it when people say like, oh my God, I overworked. No, you just planned badly. I agree. You like probably, you probably put yourself in a situation that allowed that to happen. Well, that's your fault. That's your own mistake. Plan ahead if you like, give yourself some extra time, you know, and that's also why I don't charge by the hour, you know, yeah, I charge enough. So even if I take like two weeks longer to finish it, it doesn't have any effect on like what I make. You know what I mean? Yes, it's it'll it'll, it'll always be enough. Um, so that's like why I like that way more. No, I agree 100%. Do you think crunch is like mismanagement? Like in games or, or films when um, they say we have to crunch well, to finish the project i think it's like a big load of shit. Um, <laughs> you just need to like you need to like plan better um and you know there is also companies that deal with where crunch is part of their standard pipeline and which I'm is like, wrong what the hell? <laughs> it's it wrong. is completely wrong um it, it like completely depletes the life energy out of the artists who are working there voluntarily by the way so yes. uh, you know like um that's what? also on them yeah they should like they should they should negotiate their terms much better and i know and people are like yeah but people need to, to feed their family and like you can mop floors you know there's yeah that's what i say to people like you don't need a job if you want to be an artist or a professional artist you know so, you don't, it's just weird i I mean, I'm, I'm not like, it's not like I'm unsympathetic, but at the same time, I'm like, you know, you are in charge of your life. I and agree. You are, you are in control and also at fault when something doesn't happen well that you had control over first in the first yeah, place. 100%. So if you didn't nego if you didn't negotiate a proper contract at your studio job, by the way, that doesn't pay you like great overtime, dude, like. If the client calls you up at 3 a.m. and you are angry that you had to pick up the call, you didn't make enough. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. You should be happy you if, you, if, you pay, if you make enough. You have to be so happy the client calls you like, absolutely. I'll go to my desk. I fix it right away. You have to you have to make sure that you make that much that you don't give a, a damn what time the client calls you for something you should be happy to do the work for him because he's like providing you with that currency with that value yeah 100%. so you know what i mean no i agree if I, you are exactly if 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 you are pissed that you have to get up travel to work with like a shitty car that you didn't like that you didn't like getting because the job you have doesn't pay you enough to get like a better one yeah it, it is like all your fault I agree. In, and and by the way, very important. Um, 
what that means is if you want to have a better job if you want to get paid more you have to you have to come with more to the table you, you have, have to, to pay the price more. first actually work hard 18 hours a day for like five years and then <sighs> well i mean it is so easy to be labeled dismissive yes when when you're saying uh, stuff like this and i mean i want to make very clear like i know exactly what it's like um to do like shitty jobs etc and like don't have any money and i know yeah but what we, I mean we, we both like, went through that it is it is it is easy to um to complain and be like oh yeah but i i want to have all these things i want to have higher rates i want to get paid more um, and that is fine, but that also means you have to back it up with quality. You also have to bring something of equal value to the table. And if you don't, and if you judge your work honestly, yeah. and you know, like compared to the industry standards that it's not like up to par, it's not like really at the level that like other people are charging. Well, you need to make sure that you make better work. If you don't yes. get paid what you like, it's because your work is not reflecting uh, that price. It's a free market and you are the one saying yes to a job. You are the one saying yes to a certain salary and you have all the power. If you if you hear a number you don't like, you can say no. And then people will be like, oh, yeah, but I have to feed my I have to eat, you know, like, yeah, get better. Like, like, I don't know, like become a waiter. Yeah, and I mean, in the, in the meantime, you increase your skill and then you can pay, get paid more. There is always a solution. Yes. And I just don't like people are, you know what I find interesting? People are so, so easy at looking for reasons why it can't happen. Why oh, it cannot man. happen. This is the best way to say it. Thank you. And, and I'm like, oh my goodness, like look at solutions. What can you, what can you do to increase that life quality? What can you do? What are like the actionable steps you can perform right now and tomorrow and next week and next month yeah. that will help you reach a goal that'll bring you to a higher level. And um, people need, uh, there is such a big difference. Let me tell you, <laughs> there is a big difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. Oh, and, <laughs> I'm gonna and, I'm gonna and, write that. Let me actually write it. Playing sure to win, and you. I mean, and playing <laughs> not to lose. There's a big difference. Yes. You right. need to play to win, man. You need to give everything to win. Get that top spot. Yes. Because there is a big difference. If you play not to lose, you're like doing just enough. Not oh, to get just fired. enough. Exactly. Doing doing just enough to get like a pass from the art director. And I'm like, man, this is like the completely wrong mindset. Um, what there is, dude, like <sighs> what there is to win is so much more than um, how do I say this? What I'm saying is like um, the biggest mistake is is um, not trying or not doing it. So like the risk of doing nothing is greater than the risk of trying and failing. So I mean, like, I agree. I think failing is great. Um, Honestly, failing is the best thing you can you can have. It is it is so important to fail. And I know it all sounds cliche. And why do successful people use this? Well, because it's so true. And when I yes. look at successful people whom I admire and um, success leaves trails, by the way, they leave yes. clues. Yes. Look at what successful people are doing. And I'm doing it all the time. And I'm trying to learn every day and trying to improve myself every day. Dude, I'm 23, man. I got a long way to go. I got so much I want to achieve. And um, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm making mistakes every day and I want to improve them and I want to become a better version of myself as much as possible. And when I look at successful wow. people and see what they do is look at the clues, try to implement them in your life and you will see like directly what kind of effect they have. And um, oh, yeah, I think I said it wrong earlier. What I wanted to say was the the what you can win is far greater than um, what you can lose by doing nothing what you can win so is you, far greater than what like, you can lose by doing nothing right that is what i would say so instead of like 
being complacent, being stagnant, yes, not doing anything, staying in your comfort zone, um, that doesn't bring you anything. And man, I mean, I'm trying to figure out like thousands way, thousands of way of saying like, man, play to win. Play to win. It yes. doesn't matter when you fall. Play to win, man. Like, don't play not to lose. There, there, there's a big difference, and and you should like, man. You're on this planet one time. That's oh, dude, you're saying everything I want to hear. <laughs> dude, this is that's great. like, as far as I know, I don't have any fucking proof. Like, I'm agnostic. No, you, I, I can 100% relate to what you say. 100%. So, and I'm like, come on, man. The time is ticking anyway. And um, and also, what? don't be afraid of doing something because it takes so long. Uh, let, let's say it takes two years to become like a licensed pilot. If you do nothing, you never, you will never become. Still, no, no. I mean, those two years are still going to pass. Yes. Whether yes. you try, whether you tried it or not. So yes. you should go for it, man. And you should like, if you have a passion, if you want to learn how to how to ride horses, fucking do it, man. Like, you never know what tomorrow brings, and hopefully everyone can stay as healthy as possible and live a good long life. But man, like, I'd rather do as much as possible and uh, and like like die early, whatever, than than yeah. do nothing or or being too afraid to try things yes and becoming like 120 years old and when like you think back on, on your life you're like what did i actually do well nothing because you were like a big pussy you know that is my you fear have to dude. take the risks that is my dude. fear that is my fear 100 percent well that's good because it fuel it gives you the fuel to yes. go away from that place and yes. you want to like be proactive and do things with your life and learn new things and i'm like come on man like give it your everything that is the only can, way actually <sighs> I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I just get like so energetic talking. I mean, it's almost 3 a.m. here, you know? Yes, but I and see the energy. I, I get, <laughs> That's great. And I get so like worked up because I feel so passionately about it. And I think it is, um, it is your duty, man, to, to use the life you've been given. Yeah. Um, and like give it everything you got man like like aim for the stars and maybe you get to the moon and that is fantastic you know like usually Go. you get to the stars to be honest with you if you aim for that and then keep the keep the consistency and do it every day you know i mean i hope so. i hope so man I, i mean i'm trying I, trying I, to so no i think i think you're on definitely on the right track man like at this age like you said you're you're just turning 24 the things that you know i didn't know it when i was at your age so that's that's a Actually, that's what I wanted to ask you. How did you like come up with all these um, philosophies, ideologies, um, all the things you said, right? Like all the, which is all correct and hundred percent accurate um, to grow in life and to, to charge more, to make a better life, to do what you want to do and you enjoy. Was it like your parents, or they they actually put the seeds and explained to you when you were a kid, or is it, is it coming from research and reading and experiencing? Mm, that is a great question. Um, well, I was born in Kosovo in, oh. uh, in 19, in 1996 and there was war and my parents fled to the Netherlands and, um, I don't, I just feel, I think it's so crazy that they, they left behind their whole life just to get me to safety. Wow. And, and I would, I would find it very disrespectful of their sacrifice to not do anything with it wow man that's um, amazing so i just wanna i wanna i wanna be proud of my existence you know yes. i want to do something with it and um I'll, I'll never stop before that is achieved you know so so do you think because because of because now the stuff that you talk about like you read business books and you know, um, or the the philosophies that you have, you have to work for it. You have to believe in yourself. You have to push yourself. You have to have the knowledge, respect the client, all these things, right? These are like stuff that mm -hmm. um, usually I hear experienced people saying it, right? But you you have that experience. I think you have it faster than um, average person or sooner. I don't know, like, is it because your parents taught you that way or is it because since they moved from Kosovo to to um, to Netherlands, that made you to think about okay, this happened, so maybe I should do something, you know. 
or was it like they they told you hey read books do this you should grow in life you should get better did um, you know it was it do you think it was internet like what what actually put the seed in you to 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 think this way? um where did you get the knowledge basically that, right well i mean the knowledge I mean, I'm a very curious person. I have an endless amount of curiosity for everything. And um, when I want to know something, I do everything I can to, to get the knowledge. And I don't think my parents were like, you have to um, do no, that they want me to get a diploma. They, um, they, I mean, your parents, they want the best for you, the best for you. And, um, but they, they don't necessarily say, well, you know, see the best for you. Right. I mean, no, they, I know, but like, yeah, I, I, I know, but like it, it is what they want and they want you to get like a good education, yeah. and get a job, etc. But um, it, it, it was it wasn't them who triggered me to like do what I do and, and chase my passion and, and try to create like um, and try to chase my vision. Yeah. And I don't I don't know, man, like in terms of the knowledge, in terms of like the things I know, it is like soaked up from other people, you know, from things I read, things I see online, books I read, um, and experience, by the way, um, yes. trying to do negotiations, doing like the job, having worked on all the different projects that I have on and trial and error, making mistakes, learning from the mistakes, not making them again. Um, I'm a, I'm a pretty analytical person and I just like want to, are you good with math and data? No, I'm not, you know, definitely it wasn't. I mean, I love solving problems. So I would say I'm a problem solver, but like, I'm like a visual problem solver. Um, I was never good at math, etc. Like I can mm -hmm. do standard math, but not, I'm not like a genius at it. So that's not a factor I'm good at it at all. So I, I'll never claim that. Um, but in terms of where did I get the, the, the hunger to yeah. like, prove myself and um achieve more i i don't know if i have an answer for that to be honest i think it's like a mixture of all kinds of things i, I guess it also has to do with my youth and and the fact that my parents like uh, fled a war and um mm -hmm. trying to prove to them was your father an artist um, or someone creative i mean yeah he could draw um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, he made some paintings and he could draw well. And um, but, I mean, I can draw better than him now. So yeah. I guess like when I was a kid, it was great. Yes. Um, Did he read a lot of books in front of you when you were a kid? I don't know, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that he had like art books there, like thick books, how to do oil painting. And I would mm -hmm. look at them and, and he would give them to me to, to look through. And um, I don't know, but like that drive that drive to move forward in life i don't know man there's just something in me it's just I, I don't in your know dna then to me yeah life I experience so. yeah you know actually what i want to ask you a couple of other things i don't know how much time do you have like do should we spend 10 more minutes and then finish it no well let's go let's go man if you're okay with it that's great because you're you're talking yeah, about sure. really good stuff and i feel the energy is good <laughs> i don't want to finish it <laughs> that's all that matters if it's, if it's good let's keep yeah, going the energy is good um, you know, uh, we talked about a couple of things like people should respect their price, push themselves, learn and, you know, respect the client and all that. I think the, the, the insecurity and the fear factor is like pushing artists and designers in general to lowball themselves, right? Mm -hmm. That's one thing I want to ask you that. And then I want to like in, to add to that is like, if an, if a good artist is working in a, in a studio, like a couple of experiences or maybe one or two experiences and that's that's all and working in one studio for 10 years and he doesn't know how other studios pay you know and then companies in general they raise the salaries like three percent two percent it's ridiculously low right and that imagine like that person is a, is a designer he, he's great at what he does but he doesn't know how much to charge and he is constantly getting global right and it's not it's not it's not the fault of the company because this is the rule the person that's raising the salary doesn't know this artist is great right they just go by the rules so i i, I don't want to say like companies are assholes because that's not that's not the case the, the thing is like you need to show that you're good and you're worth it it's right? it's business man it is exactly so here's what i want to ask you how can someone understand how to know not lowball himself if he's working in a studio for 10 years and he hasn't seen anything else and he's a great artist you know 
or how can someone overcome the fear to show the 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 confidence and say hey i deserve more or hey uh, this is how i negotiate you know what i mean the fear factor the insecurity well, and all of that how, how did they, how should you co- overcome that well first of all if you work at a company for 10 years um don't you have like any friends working in the industry telling like what they make etc you know what i mean yeah so I, i don't believe i don't believe you can work in a, in a in a in at a studio for 10 years living under a rock not like talking with anyone outside of your company that's even sad but that's company. a reality to be honest i know people work for 10 years and they I get mean, paid less if if that's true like it's their <laughs> own fault i mean dude like it is your responsibility to stay up to date stay up to date on actualities in your industry know what is going on dude like if you have money invested in your stocks yes are you going to never look again in 10 years no dude like you want to keep informed like well, how's it going how's the market going yeah can yeah. i make a profit here is that company paying dividends more than this stock should i you know like uh send them over to that uh company to get my dividends and, and, and all that stuff so i mean like damn you need to stay informed um and that is on you that is your responsibility so in terms of confidence You can fake it at first, like fake it until you make it. So <laughs> That's good. Be, be, I mean, be like, yeah, I think I'm worth this. And then hopefully they say yes, et cetera. And then, they, and then you can fake it and you can get accepted and get in the company. Yeah. But then you also have to back up that price with quality and expertise. And that's like the biggest challenge because they can throw you out immediately if that's not the case. Uh, yeah. So like be cautious with that. Like you can fake it until you make it, but I mean, Um, it also means that when, when you actually get accepted uh, and you actually get awarded that responsibility to solve a certain problem, you better make sure you can you can freaking do the work. Um, otherwise, like the free market will spit you out as fast as you came in. Um, mm-hmm. I would say I would say like focus on the quality of your work. Um, really try to place yourself in the company's shoes like what what is valuable to me what mm-hmm. what would be valuable in like a movie production would it be valuable to only have 2d art like PSD files like how how um, valuable are those actually what can I do with that PSD file well we can hang it on the wall as reference cool but what if you're like a great 3d artist who makes a beautiful model, who also rigs it, who also animates beautifully. Hmm. What do you think is more valuable to like a VFX pipeline? That rigged animated model or that little 2D image? Obviously, that model with much more capability. Yeah. So you have to think like, what is valuable to the company? What do they want? What kind of technologies are being developed nowadays Um, that companies are looking for, investing in, etc. Mm-hmm. Try to look ahead, try to look forward, and then um, adapt as fast as possible. Like, man, you have to adapt, and if you don't, you're gonna die, man, because the world is changing all the time. Tools are becoming easier and easier. So like I said, again, entry levels have um, decreased everything is going down Pe- more people are able to do work so eventually it comes down to your brain companies will hire you for your brain not mm-hmm. like how cool you can make how, how cool you can apply photoshop filter because all of these technical elements yeah. they will disappear soon so um eventually probably technology will get so good we don't have an we don't even need to do anything We only have to think and design. They'll probably, they'll probably hook our brains up with something. Oh, and then it's only, and then it's only a matter of like who has the best brain to come with the best designs. Um, that's like what I think. I mean, Elon Musk so, is working on it, right? I mean, on the ch- adding chip to I mean, your brain. I mean, sure. <laughs> it's, it's it, it, yeah, it's still like a long way ahead in terms of my context, like yes. the complexity, yes. etc. But I mean. That is ultimately where it's going. So if you know where it's going, you can already adapt yourself to provide in that certain field in such a way that is uh, future proof or future welcoming 
Mm-hmm. Um, but I like to go back to your original question, like how, how does one who worked 10 years at a studio know like what to charge? Well, I guess inform yourself, ask friends, ask colleagues, go to like uh, websites where they have rates. And I think that'll give you like a good ballpark of like what the industry is asking for. Now, if you are an independent and you're providing a unique service, you get to decide what you want to make. And then it's a question of, does the company or the client think I'm worth it? And if they are, you know, like how to move forward, I guess. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree 100%. Um, Yeah. The other thing I wanted to ask you could relate to this one, but, um, you know, I often ask, I mean, people ask me like, um, how do I improve my portfolio to get a job? I actually say, why do you want a job? They say, because I want to pay my expenses. I'm like, okay, so you can probably make money doing something else to pay your expenses. Why do you want to get a job as an artist, right? Because they, I say that because I know like when, when you get a job too early without improving your skill set, without gaining enough knowledge, you might actually get into the wrong job and it might actually make you stay on that job and actually kind of makes you lazy or you spend all your day traffic, you know, office work, and then you don't have any time to spend on yourself, on, on your, uh, to improving yourself, your skill sets, right? Yes. So the question is like, and I found that balance myself. Now I have a balance that I can work on my skill set, do this podcast, do character design, uh, you know, work for the company, play piano, read books. I do that every day. So that's amazing. Yeah. And, and you, it's funny that you can have time to do it. Like when I ask people, yeah. hey, do you have time to do this? They say, sorry, I'm too busy. I cannot do it. And I, I immediately know that person is like, he doesn't know how to manage time and they're, they're far behind in life, you know, because there is enough time to do everything. You know, you're a busy person, but we are doing this podcast. It's 3 a.m. in the morning there. There is, there is time. If you want to do something, there is time. But, but here's the it's thing. It's about like, priorities. Yeah. Exactly. It's about priorities. And you know what people miss is like, to me, is like they, they get into a job too fast without knowing exactly what they want to do. You know, and because of the fear, because of being insecure, like they're worried, oh, if I don't get this job, if I don't get into a company, I cannot pay my bills. Yeah, bills don't stop. But what if you just start small, like make a small amount of money just to stay alive and then slowly increase it over time. Find ways to become an entrepreneur and a good designer and a good character artist or a good environment artist, you know, slowly build up your portfolio and slowly build up your client base instead of like just relying on one job, which is like paying you every month. And that's it, you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that paying, getting paid every month. I have a contract myself now. I work for, I have a contract to, to, Basically, I spend eight hours a day for a company or more to to work on the game. It's fun. I, I love the team and everything. Um, I if you respect, like it, that's great. Yeah, I, I, but but it's not the only thing I do, right? I do. Mm-hmm. I, I practice a lot. I invest in the stock market. I read a lot of books as much as I can. I sleep less because I believe like if I I have a certain like I'm 35 now. If I don't do this now, maybe at the age 45, I may not have this energy. Maybe I will have more energy, but I don't know. That's the future, right? Yeah, yeah. And now mm-hmm. I have this opportunity. I need to use it as much as I can. Like I, I sleep yeah. like five hours every night. It's hard, but I, I don't know. That's the only way to me. Worst case is like I might die like five years earlier and there is no scientific uh, research proof to say that you will die five years earlier. Yeah, yeah. And I yeah, constantly yeah. hear from people, you need to take care of your health, right? Okay. To me, that's like that's an average overrated um, statement. There is no scientific data to tell you exactly. I don't know. Maybe there is, but I haven't seen it. I, I searched. I couldn't find anything to tell you that you will die earlier because you will work too much. Because I feel like it's the opposite. Like if you have a passion, if you have a goal, you can live longer. Look at um, uh, Warren Buffett. It gives you energy. Yes, it gives you the energy. It comes. Energy is in the universe. I don't know if you believe in that. You know, I feel that the, inner, the universe is actually, because we are essentially made from energy, right? It's, I mean, uh-huh. on the smallest level, we are energy. It's, right. there's there's no um, math you know there's no basically there's no mass there is no um there's nothing basically right it's just like uh, distance between energy and then comes up and the atoms molecules and things like that and we, we are we are we exist right they're chemicals mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i feel like if you like for, for example warren buffett he's 89 years old right and he's still working he's still planning he's for the next good. 20 years huh He's doing good. He's doing good. Yeah. yeah. Or or Jeff Bezos, if you see him, he's actually getting younger. 
comparing to 20 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> dude, he, he he got like he shaved his head. He got buff. You know? Yes, I'm like, that that yeah. shows actually working too much doesn't actually kill you. You know, no, it doesn't kill you. It just when you discover it, it makes you feel like you just for me to happen. Like I have an aha moment. I'm like, OK, so I should do this. Now I know what to do for my future. Now I know my plan mm -hmm. for the next 10 years. I don't know if this podcast is growing right now. I don't know if I, I don't care if if I have two followers or 10,000 followers a day right now. I have a long term plan. I know 10 years from now, I, I know where, where I'm going with this. You know, I know where I'm going with, with the job that I'm doing. I want to do a 3D printing. I'm planning for that. So, you know, um, I don't know where brought us to here. Uh, actually, I forgot the beginning of the that conversation. Is, that is fantastic, man. Um, I think I think we came to this point by talking about um, sleep and energy. Yes. And also we were talking about fear and uh, <sighs> insecurities. Yeah, we were talking about like the security of jobs, etc. Yeah. So, you um, know, actually, I don't know if yeah. you hear it. You know, when you do something, people say majority average, they say, hey, you shouldn't do this. It's not good. I always question. I'm like, have you done it yourself? Where are you in life? How can you give me advice if you're not there? If you haven't experienced it yourself? They're like, you, you, you're kidding yourself. You need to sleep eight hours a day. How do you say that? How do you know that I have to sleep eight hours a day? Sometimes I actually have to sleep 11 hours. Sometimes I sleep four hours and that's enough. I can work, you know? Right. And, and right. you know, uh, I feel like recently I'm trying to go, you know, they say go, go with the flow. But I think with, in this situation, you have to go against the flow because the, the majority of the flow is not going uh, to the direction that, you know, like people like you or, um, you know, good designers or artists or good entrepreneurs, they want to go, right? Because the flow, the direction right. direction you want to go is not an easy direction. It's hard. It takes effort. It's mm -hmm. a lot of energy. It needs, it all, mm -hmm. needs a lot of energy. So when people I say, and yeah, and when people say, um, what do you say? Like when they say, um, you need to sleep more. Uh, I actually say you should go um, the opposite direction of what, av what the average people in society are promoting or saying to do you know what right, i mean right right so that's the thing like i don't know if you agree with that um i feel like i think in terms of what what other people say um and what what they comment and uh how they judge it is so easy to stand at the sidelines and call whatever like you have film critics, they're like armchair experts writing and writing about the about a movie that they have no involvement in whatsoever. Um, you have family members who disprove of um, the way you live, of the job you have. They know so well how to do it and they're just talking and talking and talking and you have friends who, who laugh. You have strangers who think it's weird what you do. You have people yeah. close to you and far away from you who are, who um, go behind your back, like making fun of you and all that stuff. And it's like, man, I know that eventually those people will die and um, the yes. earth will keep spinning yes. and the universe <laughs> will keep expanding. And I'm like, it's completely irrelevant. Um, any type of negative energy that is going your way and um that's how i think so i'm like when i get like bad energy going my way I'm like like who cares like you're dying someday and uh you're not gonna you know you're not gonna exist anymore and uh it's not gonna matter anyway what you said so yeah. i only take well i mean you can decide how you take energy you can also use it as fuel which is also amazing it can be a very very deep burning fuel as well by the way negative energy especially if it comes from close people or people you you admire you can use that anyway so that's great anyway like i'll take any type of fuel you know yeah um my engine will keep going no matter what but what i want to say is and i know it sounded very dark but i mean it is true you can care what others say what others do um but in the end like people are living their own lives People go back home from their job. They have their own problems. They have their own insecurities. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, um, it's irrelevant 
That's it why is. I said, like, you know, every, everyone will die at some point. Like, who, who cares? Like, the earth will keep spinning far. Like, that mountain you see there, it's going to be here for, like, the, another million years. Yeah. So, well, we're nothing. And, um, so we, the, there the is simply... Actually doesn't matter, really. <sighs> no, not at all. And also, you know, there is simply no time to care what others think, man. Like, yes. If you, have a, if you have a dream, if you have a vision use every every single second of breath you have to to reach it and um make 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 your do something that makes you proud of your existence man yes make it useful right and, and if you don't it's such a wasted opportunity man play yeah. to win that's like 100%. i'll say it again you know so true you know, actually, what I say, I say, if if you have time to think what people say, then you're wasting time. <laughs> you know, <Exactly. laughs> yeah. you know also I a great, also a great quote I heard is, I don't know who said it, man. Like that's a, I think it's Ford. I don't know. He said, if I'm right, um, whether you think you can or cannot do something, in both cases, you're right. And I just agree with that statement so bad. You know why? Because it's all about the mindset. It's all about how you think and what your perspective is. If you think you can do something, mm -hmm. it is right. And if you think you can't, it is also correct. That's true. I agree. Um, you know, you so, know, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean, all I wanted to say is like, and you know it's it's a repeating factor in this call and i don't mind by the way i can talk about this stuff for ages and yeah. uh, because it's so true and i'm so passionate about it and if if this call can inspire people who are listening to this yeah who can like take any gram of positivity um um and hope and also motivation yeah. to to do something with their own lives and um, be proactive and play to win. That is like the biggest success of this call. If, if like even one person if finds one, this yeah. uh, insp inspirational in any way, I'm so happy I'm staying up for this so late. You I know, agree. That is all that matters. That is all that matters to me. And um, I want to share positivity, and I want to also encourage chasing excellence. And using the, this time and opportunity and oxygen we have to uh, work towards a goal that you can be proud of and uh, actually has an impact and, and provides value to the world, you know? Yeah. And there are so many souls on earth that don't have this possibility, that cannot live in a, in a country where um, it is nice, who, who don't agree. have um the opportunity or who don't even have limbs or have terrible diseases like it would be a disservice and disrespect to those souls on earth to not do something with your life and make it worthwhile uh, because there would there is always someone who wants to who would love to switch places with you any time of the day any oh second. dude that's perfect yes and you have to remember that man and you have to like um really really um um make sure that you that you keep that in mind at all times man it, it is so easy to, to lose touch with reality and and be in this materialistic world where yeah where where all of these bullshit things are important and are being respected when when there is like so much going on on earth that is terrible and i mean like um be cognizant of that be thankful for where you are today it can always it can always be worse you should be thankful that you're here yeah and to be positive have a good outlook on life and uh find something to wake up for every day and you'll be like so much happier um, that's what i wanted to say no i agree i agree 100 percent. one question actually um you know i i personally believe like life is unified it doesn't matter like if sure. you're a human being or if it's a tree or if it's um if it's a dog or a wolf or or a lion or elephant right we are okay. all lives like we exist because I, I i believe life is in the how do i say i don't know like in the roots of it is trying to find a way to advance and move to a to immortality right and mm -hmm. and and there's like mass extinctions and things like that that happens to to push the life to the next level right and as human beings we are responsible for that because we have all this knowledge and 
the, the smartest brain, maybe the smartest brain, maybe I, sometimes I actually say it's the stupidest brain because of the stupid things we do to destroy <laughs> Earth, you know? <laughs> right. So, so what I want to say is this. I mean, you, you say like you, you're staying up because you want to, you believe that even if one person takes it and learns something from this and pushes it to the next level, then you have done your job. And I feel the same. Like when I look at subscriber names, I don't look at numbers. I, I know those are human beings behind those are screens trying mm -hmm. to get something out of um yeah. you know the, the media or learn something so wh for you why do you, why do you feel like you have this uh, you have this um push to to help or to spread this message that hey guys do this like this is important mm. was it just a feeling you why have not? it right why not yes if 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 you if you can if you can pick, um, I don't know, man. I just like. There's no reason, right? Like it's just like that. <laughs> sometimes it doesn't have to be the reason, but I believe that um, it is in our nature to 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 want good. You know, yes. we want progression. We want to be. Um, we want to move forward. You know, we want love. We want to be unified. We want to share that energy, and um, and I think if you look at people like doing bad stuff to each other, um, people who cause pain to other people, yeah. they don't need pain back. They need love. You know, they need they need healing. They need good energy, and that is only achieved by having compassion for each other and also sharing this good that, you know, we, every single soul wants to have a good life. And I think it, it is so important to um, uh, embrace each other as that and also treat each other like you want to be treated. And I know that, you know, when I started, I had questions and I was writing artists and um, trying to f ask for advice. And many times I wouldn't even get a reply and, and that's fine. And I hate that feeling. And I reply to almost every single DM I get on Instagram wow. or on Facebook because I know how it's like to be in that position. Yes. I know how it's like and how shitty it feels to not get a reply or help from someone you look up to. And that is like, I mean, it comes from a place of understanding. Like, if you know how, how shitty something feels. Yeah usually those people are always very kind to others because they know how it's like um to be on the bad end of something and um i guess like it turned into like a random blurb of text i'm, I'm talking about but i mean like no no it's i i i get the feeling this is actually great it's because i know how it feels like it, i remember when i was like what you said is kind of resonates with me like when I started my career, I was messaging like some top artists and they wouldn't even reply. You know, at the time there was no mm -hmm. Facebook, it was like email. I would search to find their email. I was desperate to to get a help because I, I where I lived, I didn't have access to any information. There was no internet, there was no books, mm -hmm. right? I didn't know how to speak English, so I had to find a way to do it. So that's why I'm, I, when you said like you reply to every DM, that's that's exactly what I do. Like. Because if someone is writing to you, they actually, they're desperate. They want to have, you know, information. They want to learn something. They're, they're looking for a way to improve their lives. And as a person, I feel like I am responsible to respond to that. Like, even if I'm busy, you know, how, how long does it take? Two minutes, five minutes? What if that five minutes changes that, that person's life? Right, exactly. And I mean, obviously you can reach a point where you have like so many messages you can't even like, yeah, yeah. um it's not like possible so I, I i get it like technically at a point it's not possible anymore but what i mean is like the 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 principle of it is so important in my opinion it is so important to um do your best at making this earth a better place man you know yeah um but i think that should be like a standard rule man like it should be i agree be good be you know be good man treat each other nicely and uh 
That is so true. I even f I even feel weird. I have to say this because it should be so obvious. You it just should I mean? be the, r the rules, right? <laughs> I shouldn't. Yeah. Should... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's interesting. So true, um, um, should we talk about a bit about about your your design process? Just something different. We talked about a lot of philosophy. I don't um, know if you want to explain anything, or you are not in the mood. We are we already spoke for like two hours and ten minutes. Um, it's up to you. That's your choice. I mean, I mean, my process is pretty uh, pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, I can explain kind of roughly um, how I work, and maybe you, you you have a couple of questions I can quickly answer um, yeah, before no. we wrap up. But yeah, basically, man, like if I if I have to design something. I try to get as much knowledge about something as possible, you know. So if I have to design a robot, for example, mm -hmm. what is the re what is the reason for its existence, you know? Like, for, what is the goal? Why do you create a product? And in this case, even if it's fictional, even if it's something in a brain in like a universe you came up with, it's probably some type of factory that had to make that droid, you know. So who's yeah. the client? Why did they want that robot? Like, what kind of goal does it have to fulfill? Well, what is its purpose? And if you know that, you can already dig deeper. Cool. Oh, is it like a farmer robot? Is it like a medical robot? Cool. So, and like, you can you can entrench and go deeper and deeper and filter out like what you need. And eventually, you know, like, oh, it's a surgical robot. Cool. Like, what kind of surgery does it do? Like keyhole operations? Like, you know, minimal like very uh, minimally invasive surgery is cool. So that means like we have like a small entry hole, we got some mm -hmm. snakes coming in, probably like that. So it already like ans asking these questions already uh, direct you in a way you can go and you can fine tune and fine tune and fine tune even more and going deeper and deeper and deeper. Like um, how does it move? Is it like a stationary unit or does it have to be on wheels? Cool, like how, how is it powered? Is it powered with like some internal reactor or is it powered with, with wires? Where do the wires come from? Do they come from the bottom in the floor of the, of the, mm -hmm. of the hospital? Do they come from the ceiling? Um, is it like human operated or um, is it like a big AI system? All of these questions need answers and these answers shape your design. Okay. So designing something is about asking the right questions and getting like the right answers. And eventually, once you have like your whole spec list with solutions and requirements, it is your job to solve them in a in a beautiful and aesthetic way. And uh, and you can do that following a certain style, following a certain shape language, develop your own. Um, Tools will have effect on how things look like. CAD modeling has a different look than poly modeling, etc. So all of these things have a role. And eventually, if you know what you're going to make, if you know how the design solution looks like, it, it, it is simply a matter of executing your vision in 3D, mm -hmm. applying the, the right materials for which you also did all the research. What, what is it supposed to look like? Like, what are the parameters? What are the requirements? So you don't just um, drop some it, black material and say, this is metal, this is rubber. You need to no. understand. No, you need Should to know practical. what you're doing. Yeah. It, it needs to be great. Like, if you want to make something look realistic, try to make it like a real company would do it. You know, that is like the best way to do something. And mm. uh, things like ergonomics and anatomy is so important. So I had a client once ask me like, how would I design something for an alien race? Like a gun, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends on it depends on the aliens. A gun for an alien race might look nothing like what we have. Yeah. Everything you see on this world is based on human anatomy. Yes. Handles are like based on our scale. Uh, pads, uh, like touch pads, are based on the anatomy of our fingers. If an alien has like forearms and like crazy hands with a different shape, uh, the handles for those rifles will look different. Yes. Maybe they have like um, very different vision. It's not based on like our lenses. Um, how do their optics look like? It all depends on their life form oh. and what kind of technology they're uh, like they're evolved with. Yes. Um, so that that is design, and you can be very good at it, and you can be very bad at it. And if you're good at it, you can make beautiful design solutions. And you have to apply that type of thinking, man. To mm -hmm. like ask questions, go deep, 
do research, watch YouTube videos, uh, articles, books, try to find source material, try to understand what you're creating and uh, crystallize that knowledge by actually applying that research into a project so you can really like um, crystallize mm -hmm. what you've learned into your brain so you build up your visual library, your mental library and uh, the studies you have done in the medical field, for example, you can mix that with a different industry. Maybe you can mix that with like a military applications yeah. or like um, or like a submersible uh, oceanic uh, projects like sub submarines, for example. Once you've built like an entire network and um, a vault of information that is in your brain, you can cross reference. You can take solutions from one industry. Uh, applying in the next you can create hybrid solutions mm -hmm. you can create incredible uh, designs by applying these processes and um, being a curious ass person yes <laughs> because you need you need that inf infinite amount of curiosity to have the energy to do all the research to ask questions to go deeper and deeper and deeper and engulf yourself with information you never thought possible and um, create beautiful solutions and that is basically my process mm -hmm. and this has been so like forever that is how i think that is how i process things and that is how i uh like to, to, uh, to, to do my work yes and you're good with drawing as well like i can see like you do line right like, like really clean lines with uh, with pen oh thanks with ink yeah i love i love drawing how, how long does it take does it take for you to get there like to design with hand but on on paper with with pen um Usually I have like an idea in my head. I just grab a piece of paper with a couple of uh, fine liners and I just draw it. I never really recorded how long it takes, but mm. I guess like half an hour, 20 minutes, oh, half an hour. Oh, that's fast. That is fast. And s but that's what I think. It could be an hour, but that's what I think. I, I'm mm -hmm. not sure. How do you come up with the shapes? Like, um, like you have really nice shapes. They, they actually look realistic. They look practical. You know, there's a lot of Thanks. designs out there, like character artists designing robots and stuff. But when I look at yours mm -hmm. or Vitali, um, the design is like, it's real. I mean, I can feel like this it can exist in real world, right? But at the same time, it's futuristic, it's nice. So, I mean, how do you come up with the shapes? Like, what is your strategy when you put the sh these shapes together? Hmm. That is a good question. Um, I love anatomy. Well, so me, yes. w when I when I when I create like a muscular robotic arm, I may I look at my own arm and I'm like, how do these shapes like form into something aesthetic? And I try to make paneling that is logical. And mm -hmm. uh, how does it move? What kind of flexing does it needs to do? You know, like where will the joints be? How will the joints operate? And I try to apply the functional solutions so mm -hmm. like the, the 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 movements the joints the but like in an aesthetic way by applying this organic capsule around it that doesn't interfere with the function mm -hmm. so it's like a symbiotic relationship between forms and what they do and also the material properties so i might draw like a piece of rubberized part, which should be flexible. And then I draw like a piece of CNC machine titanium or aluminum that also mm -hmm. has different characteristics in terms of looks. That is basically how I try to imagine a thing in my head like it's real. So people look at the screen and they have their 3D viewport. I have like a, a 3D viewport in my brain and I can like, create something imagine something and turn around it and it is so faster in the brain man like mm -hmm. if, if i want to see a button here i just imagine it and, it and it boom it happened you know and this comes with practice you know piano players yes and i mean you play piano so yeah. you, you you must have feel the same piano players have been like their brains have been scanned Yes. versus a non-piano player and like the the finger coordination that piece in the brain has like a default size in a non-piano player and an experienced piano player has an increased 
yes. motor skill segment in their brain and when they stop playing by the way it also decreases yes so the brain is a muscle that'll adapt to what whatever it needs so when you apply um, this kind of stress to them to the to the brain in terms of visualizing things looking at things in different angles and trying to 3d visualize them in your brain uh, it'll get better and better and better because you're requiring more of the brain as time goes by so that is how I practice. And you can start very simply by trying to look at a, like, look at like an object mm -hmm. and really try to, really try to observe how it looks like. And then, um, try to visualize it in your brain and practicing like spinning around it. How does it look like opened up? Mm -hmm. Um, and then what you can do is you can try to like go directly from the brain into 3D and try to model what you have in your head. It can be anything you, you come, come up with. It can be a little cup, it can be a little tool, whatever. Yeah. And you can increase your skill by applying that over and over again with more complex objects. And eventually you get so good at visualizing things in your brain, you can model entire robots, entire guts and systems in your head and you know exactly how it looks mm. like in 3D space. And then you go into 3D and you execute the design you already have in your brain. So the 3D part is actually the most easy, so to speak, uh -huh. because if you mastered, if you mastered the tool, all you have to do is transferring it from the brain into the screen. Yes. Instead of having an empty brain and be like, what am I going to do now? Like designing on the screen. I think, I don't think that's good. You have to know what you're making. Mm -hmm. You have to have plan for everything, basically. It's not just to sit there and... Well, that's start. that's how I do. That's yes, how I do. I think that's... Uh, even Vitaly was telling me he's doing the same way. You know, actually, um, I want to ask you something. I don't know if you want to check it out. Like, for me, I'm, I'm a character des character designer, character artist, creature designer, things like that, right? I don't know if you saw my portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, yes. I love anatomy. Beautiful. Thanks, man. No, not as good as you, awesome. but thank you. <laughs> I love... <laughs> it's beautiful. I love anatomy. But... If I want to do something like you, do you think for a person like me, is it possible? I'm asking it because Absol I want to... Absolutely. So where, where should I start? Like if you see my portfolio, what should I do to, to get to, the, to, to your market and design robotics and stuff? Because I want to also make products. I don't want to just... Man, what you have to do is, you know, let me give you an example. You know what I think is absolutely fascinating to huh. observe? I see people create medieval armor for their fantasy designs. Yeah. And they don't work. They suck. They just make something that looks good. Yes. Like all the anatomy has to be perfect. The veins, the, the skin, the draping, all that stuff, the muscle insertions and the symmetry and, and everything has to be perfect. And people spend years and years and years trying to perfect their anatomy yes but they haven't spent a single hour studying how medieval armor works and how it's made and how it connects and how it is suited up to a knight yes why not why isn't the same amount of research applied to the knight armor as was the anatomy i know that anatomy is difficult so it may need like more man hours i get it but i feel like <sighs> you should also spend time studying the armor you should also spend time studying how the metal reflects how does how does light behave if you're painting that is if you're yeah. sculpting it doesn't matter um and so in that same way you can study how do they design a product how does what is injection molding why does a machined part from aluminum have a different aesthetic than a molded piece of plastic this is these aesthetic results are uh, because of the manufacturing process and all of these things leave marks and effects and, and certain shapes can be done and some others can't and i'm like all of these things are as important as as your anatomy for example yeah if if you don't understand your product if you don't understand fundamentally what it is that you're creating or what are the materials that you're using you're not you, you haven't mastered your craft um a a wood a woodworker like he knows exactly what wood is good for what part 
maybe fine for fine details hardwood is great because it like holds up to the to the filings and and the and the and the carving maybe for bigger shapes softwood is good because they can carve away a lot of material dude yeah. these are like fundamental knowledge these are like fundamental knowledges you need to acquire and have before you can even start a project so i i just think it's like very interesting uh, the imbalance um we can observe um in artists where they like spend so much time mastering one thing and then they don't know uh the other at all and they totally destroy the quality of their of their of their project yes and i mean in terms of portfolio etc like you should go for quality over quantity yeah dude michelangelo spends years sculpting a, a yeah. piece out of marble and people still remember him today nobody remembers mediocre man and he's rich like he, he was rich actually he was very rich dude perfect and i <laughs> and i'm so happy he and i'm so happy he was yes. but i mean what i'm saying is um if he spends years making one sculpture that is like protected at all costs yes he is long dead people are still talking about his work i mean that says something he that's was a, a master yeah. of his craft and um I respect that so much and I and I aspire to be of that quality one day. Yeah. You know? And um that that requires studying. He knew how fabric draped. How do you create something translucent in marble? Yeah. That isn't even translucent. <laughs> that was insane. It's yeah. so it's so masterful and I respect that so much and if you really want to stand out and make something beautiful, you need to put in the same amount of effort and time into something eventually i hope you'll you will achieve that place but one thing to start like for mechanical design is yeah. understanding how things are made uh studying robots studying products studying hard surface and learning your modeling go online there is tons of resources how to learn how to do hard surface yeah. but i feel like you master you master the 3d you need yeah. a, you need to learn the, the mental the mental yes, side of I hard that, surface modeling. Exactly, that's what I'm lacking. I need to sh I need to shift mm -hmm. my because I I'm, I'm I know anatomy well, like everything, muscle names. I'm I'm still studying in my classes with like I teach people and I review right. it again and again. So uh, and I and actually one of the things I say, um, I had a students like they started a class first first class they were like I don't think anatomy is what I should learn. And I'm like, actually, anatomy is the first thing you should learn and master it. And then everything else is easy, you know, because hmm. because our body is like when I say easy. I mean, obviously, product is not like what you do is different. It's as you said, like it's a mind shift. You need to shift your mindset, your your brain to, to get there. I don't know if I can get there, yeah. but but I'm, I'm going to ask you again. Let you finish your sentence on that. But I tell people you need to know anatomy well, and it doesn't matter what you want to do. You need to know anatomy well. That's that's the most important part to me. I don't know. Do you think? is true or as a sculptor yeah absolutely 100 mm -hmm. percent you 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 may you can be like the master of wrinkles you can yeah. be the master of buttons and little cloths yeah if you don't have a good base if you have a a humanoid that doesn't look believable yes it doesn't matter like no one cares <laughs> yes. you feel off people will feel something is off they don't like it and it's like man and i mean anatomy is crazy because we see humans every day we've been programmed we know in our dna to understand our brain our, our our brain sees faces in everything like we're so hardwired yeah um to to know I mean, women are like programmed to spot symmetry in, in, in male faces, to, to, to look for genetic health. I mean, dude, it goes so much deeper than you think. And the, the, the sad part or the hard part is everyone is a judge. Um, you don't need to be an expert to know anatomy or not. Like when something feels off, everyone mm -hmm. is able to say like, hey, this is not, this doesn't look right. Yes. It's, it looks ugly. Um, so, I mean, we can we can accept that by learning to 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 jump into anatomy you've also like accepted to take on one of the hardest challenges there are because it's just so hard to master it, it you is, know yeah. what's funny when you draw like a turtle um and you draw like the, the eyes like forward or backward or whatever 
we don't notice it still looks cool like a turtle but if a turtle saw that drawing of a turtle he would probably think like hey that looks he looks like a retarded turtle <laughs> yes. that's 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 not where turtle eyes are supposed to be you know yes. so that already proves uh, proves that like because we aren't familiar with like how turtles look like because we haven't seen them thousands and thousands of times yes uh, we are not in a place to judge um, but with humans we are so absolutely and learning anatomy is so important and i think it's great to learn some anatomy classes even if you're doing hard surface because let's say you're designing a robot you want to make it look proportional you want to make him look good you want to make the volumes good um i mean for example knees on a human they're not like straight they're in an angle but yes. you don't know that uh, yeah. until you know until you until you know it yes exactly um, so i mean all of the, all of these knowledges they help in one way or another so i highly recommend uh becoming more knowledgeable in any field if it's useful to your craft i agree 100 percent. so um uh, that's, okay that's great going back to what what i asked um how do I improve mm -hmm. myself? Like, uh, if I want to come to your field, as you said, like I, I know the 3D craft. I'm, I'm in a moment that I'm trying to do something new. I know anatomy. I know how to design creatures. I'm designing the things that I like to design, you know, or or make. And um, I want to try to get into what you do, like something different. I would say, do studies, studies of things uh, you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn, like robots. Uh, do studies of robots, like real ones, mm -hmm. but try to learn like what is the anatomy of a robot, like what does it need, what kind of similarities do you see in, in different kind of robots, uh, well they need a power source, they, need, they have a certain scale, you have scale in motors, mm -hmm. you have like big industrial automotive uh, robots, they have like big fast servo motors, do we have the same in prosthetics? No we don't, we don't have the technology to have like these miniaturized super fast and strong servo motors because of the wattage and the voltage and all the, yeah. all the torque etc so all of these are like uh, technical limitations but they have a huge effect on how something looks like and i think um the biggest challenge is not necessarily the 3d craft i know that you master that it is like um shifting mindset shifting the mindset on how to create something, how to engineer something. Yes. How do we create um, a, a, a skeleton, a robot that like looks right, has the right joints, is proportional. And then you have to do studies on materials and manufacturing processes. Like mm -hmm. um, let's say you want to have a robot that has a polymer shoulder shield or shoulder cap. Yeah. Cool. Well, first of all, it needs to have like an organic shape. So what is the best way? Well, we're probably going to make a plastic or polymer injection molded shoulder cap. Cool. Um, we're going to make a mold for that. Nice. Once it's like poured, it cannot be like just a cap. It also needs to be mounted a certain way. Mm -hmm. How do we mount that plastic cap to the shoulder in a secure way where there's like enough material for the screws to have like their, uh, their like grip and torque? Cool. So in the, while you're designing that shoulder cap, you also need to think about the clearances for the movement. So it already has a direct effect on how big it is and what clearances it has for lateral and, and azimuth mm -hmm. movement, etc. And then also, where do you attach it? So where do you place those um, attachment uh, lugs? These questions, this, um, these questions and their answers, they decide for you how it's going to look like. And, is there any um, books you have to any books that uh, you would recommend I, mean, I, I i never really read books on like hard surface design but it's like, it's like a way of thinking it's like a mm -hmm. logical way of thinking try to try to place yourself in that universe with the task of oh, all right how do i attach this to my to my shoulder well you know yourself like if you have any logic at all you know it needs yeah. to be attached right yes cool how do we attach it how do other products get attached in a similar way? Try to learn from other examples. How do how much thickness do they put around the screw? You always see like they're pretty beefy cylinders um, yeah. that then they put the screw in. All right, so you can take this knowledge um, already with your shoulder pad, and then eventually maybe it gets painted 
okay, so how does paint look like on polymer? Or, or is it like a carbon fiber uh, construction? How does carbon fiber look like? Then you can go to Keyshot, for example, and see, do, do they have carbon fiber in the, in the library? Mm -hmm. how, big is carbon, how big is carbon fiber usually? Try to look at references, like how big is the weave? Um, is it a couple of millimeters? Is, can you scale it up super big? No, it's probably, it has a standard size. Yeah. So when you make a carbon fiber shoulder pad, you know how big a shoulder is. You know how big a human is, like two meters approximately, like a tall one. So you already know like, hey, that carbon fiber texture needs to be like this small in comparison to the robot, which has a certain scale. And you keep going and you keep going and you apply logic to these basic questions. Does that mm -hmm. make kind of sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand what you're saying. I know exactly what you're saying because when I uh, try to make creatures or stuff like that, I look at nature and I'm like, well, how can I combine this together and make a creature? Or how can my creature have something that exists in nature? Why does he have this? Because he wants to protect, protect himself or something, you know? Yes. Or he, he's right. fast, so he has to have this kind of thing to to increase like become more balanced when he's running too fast you know uh, stuff like mm -hmm. that so it's, it's the same principle but i need to shift my mindset and think about mechanical parts and maybe make a sh yes. li library sh library of different shapes from the mechanical parts do do um research look at robots uh -huh. look, look on youtube like how they create them how do they manufacture different materials um uh, man, like it's so much fun to do that research to, to yeah. give yourself that knowledge and also it's fun how you can see that there is biomimicry how they take um, Information from nature to apply that to, to the to technical things just for example those speed trains they um, They they shape the nose to look like a certain type of a birds beak that oh. goes into the water and I'm like that is so cool you know so nature is like best designer the ultimate yeah it's like the best designer because it had millions of years to test things out to try wow. things um and that is ultimately the coolest and i think that is organic organic design is like the ultimate i think until you create like meta materials and things that even surpass uh, natural capabilities, but that's like a totally different discussion. But dude, like, I think you're gonna have a great time, and you can always reach out to me, like after this podcast. Yeah, that would be great, things. man. Feel, I wanna, feel free to reach out, dude. I want to try something. Do you have workshops as well, or you don't do any any courses for people? You just you you have tutorials. I saw you sell them, but I don't know if you have I am. Um, oh, <laughs> I'm releasing a art station learning tutorial soon. Oh, great! Um, I'm gonna, gonna get be, it. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a 10 hour course on how to design a space rover from scratch. Um, wow. So I will definitely yeah, reach definitely out to you. Like I have a lot of questions about this. I spoke to like, you know, um, Mike Nash, you know, Mike Nash as well, right? I don't know if you guys have spoke together. He's, he's great. Of course, like, yeah, we're pretty good. Yeah, he's yeah. very good. He's also he also gave me some um, design um, like he I, I was trying to make a robot and I gave it to him. He did some feedback on it. This is just the first try I ever did and it, it was eye-opening to see what what he he sees right and i'm like looking at yours i'm kind of like the things that i want to make is like more like kind of like what you do you know even even awesome, weapon man. designs Thanks. i like i like the design of weapons i like um, guns for example it's just cool you know they're yeah um they, they have a so functional so yeah, cool yeah the beautiful design very simple you know there's nothing uh, people see it they might they, if they don't know it, they might think like there's complicated stuff in it it's not that complicated really it's just like yeah. practical so, it's so to the point so true man yeah i mean nothing nothing is complex it's only a collection of simple parts yes exactly so that's the thing like i want to open up my mindset and get into something that is like not just inside a computer i want to expand it and bring it out you know and I want to actually exactly. use it. I'm, I'm actually thinking to print my 3D characters, but that's a, that's a different topic. Um, for the last thing, I want to ask you this, because your knowledge is great. I want to extract some of that, that knowledge. Uh, what, what, do you have any book recommendation? Yes. On my Intel page, on my website, there is a whole list of books I recommend in terms of drawing, etc. Um, I mean, yeah, you know how to draw. Like Scott Robertson's books are great, etc. But in terms of design books, oh, H point uh, packaging for design car for car design is great. You should get that one. How do you call it? Like, it, 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 it? 
uh, it, it's called H point and then packaging design or something. H point uh, packaging design. Okay. Yeah, you'll find it. You'll you'll find it immediately. But I mean, it applies to much more. So you might think, oh, that's a car design book. No, it teaches you how to design packaging, how to design uh, cockpits for cars. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, this knowledge applies to everything. Wow. Whether you make a spaceship, whether you make something that has anything to do with transportation or interaction with the human, it teaches you great principles that are so valuable uh, for for any type of design and i think like that's very valuable so that would be one i highly recommend i'll definitely get that and and to be honest man like i'm not really a big book guy in terms of the art and design yeah i read books for like other things um so yeah. i'm not the right person to ask uh, i actually yeah. think the other things are more important which you have it on your website the win without uh, pitching manifesto uh, mastery yeah, by robert book. green that's my favorite book it's just he Great explains books. in a simple yeah. yeah what else the business of, um i actually didn't read most of those that you have i need to get those yeah it's quite a it's quite a quite a big list i highly yeah. recommend it. these are good stuff um i guess this was great, man. We, we we spoke for like two hours and forty three minutes. <laughs> That's Lots crazy. Of stuff. Yeah, it is crazy. I hope it was good for you. I don't know. Like, um, do you have anything else, or should we finish it and then catch up after I stop recording? Do you want to say anything else? Um, man, I mean, yeah, we can we can talk after, but I just wanted to say thank you so much for the invite, dude. Was, thank you uh, for joining me. <laughs> Dude, it was absolutely a great chat out. It was a bit all over the place, but I think people will like that. And yes. I mean, yeah, it's just like um, sharing our thoughts. You know, and I was very uh, nice hearing your stories as well. So thanks, yeah, thanks man. again for, for having me, man. This was great, really. It was one of the fun conversations I had because, yeah, I mean, I, I don't like to write a script and read on top of that. I want to like the, the conversation to to flow and be, be yeah. realistic, you know, so. And I think well, that's when that happened. Actually, yeah, that happened actually. That this was, this is great. I'm happy. <laughs> cool, man. Awesome, so man. I'm gonna say bye here. I'm gonna put the link of your just uh, portfolio and everything in the description of this podcast video. I'll put your tutorials, and then uh, when do you release your next tutorial? The one that you said um, on on our decision. Oh man, um, it needs to be finished, and then the art station team is gonna edit it. So I don't, I don't, I don't know like what date exactly, but mm -hmm. it's gonna be soon. Okay, great. So yeah. when you do that, give me the link. I will put it in the description of this video as well. I will, man. I will. So I'm going to say bye to people and see you guys All next right, man. time. All right, man. Bye-bye. Thanks so much. Thank you so much.